This is the Mid-American Conference on ESPN. The Miami River in the city of Toledo all set for the Battle of I-75. That means we come to the campus of the University of Toledo at Glass Bowl Stadium where the Bowling Green Falcons are in town to tangle with the Toledo Rockets. Huge Northwest Ohio rivalry, but even more so, take a look at the standings in the Mid-American Conference right now. Yeah, Western Michigan's the only undefeated at 3-0, but there's Toledo and Bowling Green. Winner today says we can go win a MAC championship. That will be realistic. Great to have you with us, everybody. Come to the right place. Michael Rega, my partner, Gerard Cherry. Big fella, let's start with the Bowling Green Falcons, where their head coach, Scott Leffler, feels like they're getting ready to take Finding ways to get the job done. Now, granted, they lost to Northern Illinois, but what you appreciate is the fact that they were able to beat Kent as well as Akron. And Harold Fanton Jr., you're going to hear his name called a lot today because he is flat out phenomenal he can do it all he can beat you with his arms he can beat you with catching he can beat you with running he can beat you with blocking he's just flat out that guy that man that dude but the Bowling Green defense of late has been playing tremendously well from a sack standpoint in that they are on the hunt for quarterbacks and they are getting after dudes with Hawkins and company involved and when you think about the Toledo Rockets, it starts there with Jason Candle. And what he represents from a head coaching standpoint is that he's one of the best in the MAC and in Toledo. But at the same time, he's happy with what he's seeing right now out of his squad. Tough loss against Buffalo a couple weeks ago. But outside of that, they have back their quarterback, Tucker Gleason, that he is finding ways to get to different receivers. And he's that dual threat quarterback as well. But what really impresses me about this Toledo Rockets defense in particular is their safeties. Max and Hook, he's a tackling machine. And then you add Emmanuel McNeil worn into the mix he can make plays and get the job done as well inside Glass Bowl Stadium, the home of the Toledo Rockets. Uh, the toss was won by Bowling Green. They're going to defer Toledo to receive. They go off their hands on the football first. Zach Long has the football on the tee at the 35-yard line. I tell you, hang on, everybody. This one usually comes down to the final few moments. Game on. Toledo Bowling Green inside Glass Bowl Stadium. Non-returnable off the leg of Zach Long. So let's find out about this Toledo Rocket offense. Tucker Gleason, the starting quarterback, did not go last week. He is back now. Wasn't able to go at Northern Illinois. And John Allen Richter quarterbacked his backup, quarterback the Rockets to the impressive road win in DeKalb. But Good to see Tucker Gleason back at it. There you see his Mid-American Conference ranks. He's had a very productive year leading this offense. Off that play fake, Bowling Green will put a lot of heat on Gleason and come up with that first snap sack. Oh, look at the Falcons. They got all over that as uh, in on that strong blitz was uh, A.V. McGarry on the hit. And we told you early on, Michael, that the defense will get after the quarterback, and they certainly did it right there. Now back to the uh, the ground game on the uh, the second snap of the afternoon, and that is uh, Savon Clark. And well, look at this fired up Bowling Green defensive 11, Gerard, to start this one. That tells you that it's rivalry week. That lets you know right now that the intensity is at a whole other level for this football game. And if you're Bowling Green defense, you keep the pressure. And if you're Toledo, you weather the storm. Big Ali Saad on that hit. Gleason's got to look at third down at 16. Tucker Gleason, seam route. It was broken up. Outstanding defensive play from a Jordan Oladokun, who wears number one. So three and out. Hey, if you're Scott Leffler in Bowling Green, you couldn't have scripted that better defensively. Exactly. That's what you want. You want your defense to show presence and show that they are here to play today. And for this offensive unit for Toledo, they simply have to understand. You're going to match up in intensity there, and you have to bring it for four quarters, not just for a series, but for four. And right now, give the edge to Bowling Green. Love what I just saw on the defensive end. 
Yeah, how could you not, huh? Emilio Duran. The Toledo punter is going to hit this one from the 10-yard line. He'll drive it high, and it's going to take a left turn and kick out of bounds. So Bowling Green with excellent field position to begin their first drive of the afternoon. Connor Bazelak, there he is, who wears that number seven. Gerard last week, how about the efficiency? 23 of 27 he hit in the pass game for 313 yards and a couple of TDs in that 27-06 win over Kent State. Yeah, in the process, Michael set a Bowling Green passing record for efficiency. And one of the things that you appreciate about Connor is the fact that he does find multiple receivers. It's not just about Harold Fannin Jr. Right, that is a guy who you constantly want to go to because he gets a job done. Five yards the previous spot. Three kick, fourth down. All right, here we're going to uh, we're going to repunt that, uh, as you heard. Our game referee today is uh, Matt Pakowski. Pakowski, of course, the uh, the gentleman with the white hat on. You'll hear from him all afternoon as he takes to the microphone as the game referee. All right. So that Toledo punt cover team, Gerard, got to come back on the football field and uh, do it again. And Bowling, yeah, Bowling Green should get very good field yeah, position again. Toledo's at a, at a deficit right now because you just had guys cover the football field and they may be winded from that covering. Pressure coming, but able to get that off was Emilio Duran. Shorter punt and uh, coming up on uh, that Bowling Green uh, fair catch was uh, Justin Pigues, and uh, he is able to uh, secure it. All right, let's take a look again. Connor Bazelak, here he is. He had the big one last week in the win over Kent State. He certainly did, and as we said before, found multiple receivers, not just Harold Fannin Jr., but he found a way to get to his other guys like Malcolm Johnson Jr., as well as Finn Hogan. But what you appreciate again is that Connor is so accurate and it's going to take a great job on the part of Toledo defense to get him off those points. Toledo defense is strong. That first carry and busted it to the outside is carry on Stewart. Stewart with the outstanding run. Gives Stewart a quick 25 to move the sticks on that first carry of the afternoon, Terry on Stewart. And Terry on bounces it outside. He's more, no more for running in the interior of a defensive line, but right there he bounces outside. No one there to contain Michael. Take it up the football field as he just put on display right there. Went for 124 yards last week again in the Bowling Green win. Off that play fake, crossing route. That's Harold Fannin Jr. Fannin got six as he makes his first catch of the afternoon. And, folks, this young man right here, Gerard, you, you tell all our viewers, the NFL squads are drooling over his capabilities. Drooling, salivating, excited, you name it, they are that because of the fact that he's such a talent in that he can catch it, he can block. And what's so impressive about him, too, Michael, is the fact that he does what? After the catch, he is one of the best runners in college football, as you see right there. 495 yards after he catches the football. What do you yeah, Kyle Parker? Yes, sir. Round game. Stewart tried to cut back inside behind the interior of that offensive line. That's uh, their center, Alex Padgett. Padgett wears number 57. The center makes all those offensive line calls for Bowling Green. Third down and uh, long two here for Bowling Green. They're on the move in the red zone. They uh, got the football after the Toledo punt put them on a short field. Yeah, showing you signs of complimentary football. There you see where Bowling Green is on their third down conversion rates near 40%. Now that quick flip. First down, Bowling Green. They'll move the sticks. They went to that quick flip to Jamal Johnson. Johnson backing up Terry on Stewart. He is a uh, senior, a young man out of the state of Illinois. First down, Bowling Green. Yeah, sweep action to the outside, and what Bowling Green is simply saying right now is we're going to keep testing you until you prove that you can stop our outside runs. And so far, Toledo has had no success doing just that. Jamal Johnson, there he is in the slot. Now they list him as a running back. 
Uh, but you see his diversity. Motion again. Stewart, a bounce off a tackle. Terry on Stewart. He's in the end zone. Touchdown. First drive of the afternoon. Molly Green. No about a doubt about it, Michael. And Terry on Stewart shows you once again why he's such a hard guy to bring down. His short stature. It's one of the things that is so hard for a defender to do is a tackle. But if you do come to Terry on Stewart, you have to bring your legs and your arms. You simply can't hope that if you bounce into him, he's going to go down. He is so compact as a runner, and he is certainly running hard today. Harden, you've had to play that safety position. 5'9", 225. That's about the perfect NFL size for a running back, yes? It certainly is. He's like a mix of a Mini Cooper and a Hummer. <laughs> nice. Uh, I like the analogy five plays 45 yards in just two minutes and 42 seconds the PAT added uh, by Bowling Green and you couldn't ask for a better start on the road for Scott Leffler's football team. How does Toledo respond when we come back. And our collect date in our name mutual customer. I mean doing the same kind of thing. Higher taxes on it's are here. Woo! Football teams are playing for, huh? The Battle of I-75 trophy. Again, these campuses are, as the crow flies, 13 miles apart. Uh, down I-75 here in uh, in Northwest Ohio. Well, how about that? Right there. I, I mean, Gerard. I mean, these numbers tell you everything you need to know about uh, how evenly decided these football games usually turn out to be certainly and for the last 14 years has been more one-sided with Toledo but to the credit of Bowling Green of late they have made it a much more competitive game winning last time they were here and they're well on their way today Michael very impressed with what we saw from Bowling Green in regards to kicking game getting great field position offense scoring and the defense creating a three and out scenario absolutely can't ask for a better start than that Second uh, non returnable uh, kickoff in the first four minutes of this football game from uh, the Bowling Green kickoff man, Zach Long. Now, so if you're Toledo, uh, look, you know, Jason Candle and his football team, they aren't, uh, haven't played in the last couple of uh, Mid American Conference Championship games and gone to bowl games because they don't know how to respond to early adversity. Right. They do. They certainly do, and they know what it means to go out there and play at a high level. And they're going to have to do just that because you don't want to get in the spot right now early on this game, Michael, where you give that football back to what appears to be a really on fire offense for Bowling Green. Empty and five receivers to start this set. Well, now running back Connor Wallenzak will offset left, and this is Wallenzak on the carry. Wallenzak has been real good in the backup role. 210 pound sophomore from Perrysburg, Ohio, which is uh, right here adjacent to the city of Toledo. I call it right smack dab in the middle. And Wallenzak, he's going to be a straight ahead runner. He's not going to give anything fancy. He's just going to get the job done. We may not see Jacquez Stewart today. Now that quick throw. And Toledo will put it in the hands of one of their fleet wideouts, Junior Vanderos. What a talent this junior is. Watch Vanderos Gerard go to work here. Yes, and Junior says it's not there, so let me break it outside. Oh, you're going to miss me too. And that's one of those guys, Michael, when he was a kid, who was not hit often when you play the game. <laughs> Just too lightning quick, huh? Yes, indeed. Yep. Now motion from Vanderos across the formation. Quick toss, Wallenzak. Broke a tackle and then carrying Bowling Green defenders for nine yards. It looked as if C.J. Brown, the boundary uh, corner, had uh, him behind the line of scrimmage, but he broke the tackle. Not a fancy play, but a smart play in there. Let's isolate the cornerback or the safety in this case, Smith, and see if he can get the job done. He misses a tackle, and Wallenzak goes straight ahead. Uh, Toledo going very quickly now, and this is usually the way Jason Candle likes to do it offensively. Got a couple of uh, co-offensive coordinators, uh, Mike Hallett and Robert uh, Weiner. Yeah, when your offense is struggling and starting off slow in that first drive, what do you do? You go to tempo. Get the pace going. Get guys moving. Realize this 3.30. We got a football game, guys. Let's go. I like that, partner. 3.30, time to play. Go. That clock should uh, re really <laughs> go off when it hits 3.30, right? On a Saturday afternoon. 
Yeah, it looks like with Toledo, it started around 340. <laughs> okay. They've fallen in a uh, very quick 7 0 hole. Tucker Gleason back in the lineup today. Staying on the ground. This is Savon Clark. Very close to moving the sticks again. They're going to give him nine down to the 41 yard line of Bowling Green. Real, real tough bigger back, huh, Parker? That's right. The Georgia transfer and Savon Clark, big back, 6'1, 225 pounds. And he shows you that again, just like Stewart, if you're going to tackle him, you better bring your entire body and gang tackle him as well. So we got nine to Savon Clark. Second and one for Tucker Gleason. Gleason, get rid of it quickly. Put it on the hands of Savon Clark. He's got a first down inside the 40 to the 39 yard line. Bowling Green secondary got him on the ground. That Bowling Green hit defensively came from one of the backup linebackers, Miles Bradley. And for Bowling Green right now, you're not doing a good enough job on the outside in that you're forcing contain rules. You're going to have to honor and do a better job because that is what Toledo's attacking. Four wide receivers, as you see, two by two across the formation. The tight end, Anthony Torres, in motion. Play fake. Gleason going to put it up deep. It is hauled in and caught by Jawan Newton. Boy, terrific adjustment. Jawan Cherry, I know you've been in that situation as a safety a lot. Tell us about the Jawan Newton, the way he constructed to catch that football. Well, great job by Jawan Newton, one of tracking the football, because Rambo is in a good position, but that fake stop is one of the harder balls to defend. Back to the ground game. Ooh, look at the Bowling Green hit. As uh, coming up for, again from that linebacker spot, that's Joseph Sip Jr. He wears number three, extremely athletic, and they felt good about him handling Toledo's outside stretch and zone runs. Right. Joseph. Whenever you see a guy's name and it has Florida attached to it, that lets you know he's a fast <laughs> guy. He's fast and he uh, fast and likes to hit. Well, Toledo knocking on the door, trying to get this one tied up. The second down snap. Gleason will play fake. Gleason back at the end zone. It is caught. Touchdown, Toledo. Juwan Newton. Ninth touchdown catch of the year for the Rockets' leading receiver. And Juwan Newton with each touchdown that he catch, Michaels goes into the record books. And he's in a spot to where he's going to surpass the all-time leader for touchdowns at Toledo. But here's the case. He had a plethora of choices right there, Tucker Gleason, who he could go to. He could have went to his tight end, Torres, but he decided to go to Newton, who once again catches a touchdown. That seems to be a lot of what he does from a production standpoint for the Salido Rockets football team. Dylan Cunahan has just uh, handled the PAT. Gerard Cherry might be one of these offensive-minded afternoons for 60 minutes. We'll certainly discuss more when we get back for now. Holding. Check out my homes. Now, new sauce and toss. Thank you. Happy. Time. Toledo Rockets said uh, we need to drive, and that means, you know, we're going to make sure that our two guys, Jawan Newton and Junior Vanderross, get involved. Big touchdown catch, right? It's for Jawan Newton, ninth of the year, but more than that extends his career work here with ball with the uh, Toledo Rockets yes, 30 finds, touchdown catches partner finds himself in the tie with Cody Thompson and if he gets one more he will break the record and on top of that on a national level he's fifth and probably fourth to third in the nation as far as touchdowns are concerned but yes Newton is a pivotal part of what they want to do on the offensive side and that's exactly what you want to do Michael you have the answer and you go to your go-to guy in Newton in that you know you can trust him to get the job done so he's tied with uh, Cody Thompson. That's right. Newton is all time, right? Exactly. Toledo uh, Rocket career touchdown catches. And something tells me he's going to break the record. <laughs> yeah. You just got to look at uh, Rakeem Smith. Smith standing back inside the five yard line, but his kick is going to kick out of bounds uh, on that uh, that Bowling Green sideline on, on the boundary. All right, let's take a look at Terry on Stewart, Gerard Cherry, and how absolutely, tremendously productive he is. 
very dynamic r rapper and runner in that bully, as he likes to call himself, is hard to bring down. And he's a bully out there on the football field in that he takes on all comers when it comes to him running that rock and getting the job done. Would you as a safety in your playing days, I mean, you'd be looking at him all week long. And as we said, knowing at 5'9", 225, he's looking to lower the boom on you when he's coming at you. Certainly is. And the middle has to be gang tackle, gang tackle. Yeah, you tell you tell all your other defensive mates, don't make me solo up on no, him now. Don't let me ISO, because it might not be pretty <laughs> on my part. All right, take a look at his pressure now on that first down throw that maybe caused Counter Bazelak to uh, get rid of the football early. Exactly. You have to get Bazelak off of the point. And if he stays there stationary and comfortable in the pocket, he's going to exploit you and pick you apart. So that's a nice job on the part of Toledo's front of getting to Bazelak and getting him off that point. His third college football program, the young man from Archbishop Alter. Excellent football program in Dayton, Ohio. Bazelak going to throw that backward pass that Jamal Johnson hauled in tight roping this boundary on the toledo sideline and they're going to mark it right at the 41 yard line which is uh, now going to bring up a third down and five for connor Bazelak in this bowling green offense this direction galore helps keep the defense off balance when you run those type of plays they love to get Jamal Johnson involved, especially in the pass game. He's already caught two today. His 23rd pass reception on the year from a running back spot. Bazelak with time through the out route. It was caught. It was caught by Harold Fannin. They're going to call that a catch. Fannin had it ripped away. That was Emmanuel McNeil Warren. It's going to be a catch, but Gerard, it's going to bring up fourth and a yard. And what is uh, head coach Scott Leffler thinking? I think that at fourth and a yard from his own 44, got the big backs on the football field now. He's thinking, be aggressive, be, be aggressive. And if you have a back like Stewart on your roster, I have no problem handing him that rock and see if he can pick up a tough yard. So with fourth down and one. And for Fannin Jr., what you want to do in these shallow crossing routes is make sure that you're right by the sticks. You don't want to be short of that marker in order to pick up that first down, but give credit to McNeil Warren in that junior. Does he have to? Yeah. The outstanding Gerard, four. Do you appreciate my pound? Played uh, at a DB. That is it. Again, Toledo's found another one. First completed the catch with the incomplete. The fourth and ten. Kowski. And uh, Toledo gets their stop, and Scott Leffler's going to get his Bowling Green Falcon puck squad out on the football field now. And back in that return spot is Bryson Hammer, the young man from nearby Fremont Ross High School, and well, we've seen him. He has had a terrific year. Uh, he's averaging 18 yards. <laughs> per punt return Gerard and then that's not just in two punt returns he's returned 11 this year for a better than 18 yards per yeah, that's what we call a weapon yeah someone who makes you flip the football field and that's exactly what you want to do with the Toledo Rockets right now get that great field position so John Henderson the Bowling Green punter hit that off the side of his foot well no fair catch for Hammer and he paid the price, as in he got hammered. We'll tell you more when we come back. The football with Toledo's Rockets in this 7-7 seven, seven top. For work. Oh, my arm. See chicken, but either way. Eating. Yeah, I know this my. Plus, let's go to the. NHL on ES. Tickets at a premium today, close to 30,000. Half of them will wear the orange and brown of Bowling Green. Yeah, the other half, the uh, the midnight blue and gold of the Toledo Rockets. Pleasure to be here with you, everybody. Glad you're a part of ESPN College Football.
Michael Regai, Gerard Cherry, our terrific ESPN crew. Second possession for the Toledo Rockets here in the opening quarter, and not much room there for the running back, uh, Connor Wallenzak. So we have not seen the starter today, Gerard, the normal starter, Jacquez Stewart, who did not go last week either against the uh, uh, the uh, Northern Illinois Huskies. Yeah, Wallenzak ran to a wall, number five, Anthony Hawkins in the process of that run. Gleason going to put it up. That out route got on the hands of Jawan Newton, but he couldn't haul it in. And this is like the first possession, right? This, this is uh, Bowling Green. Gerard, we got the sense that if they could have Toledo playing in third and long, seven, eight, nine, ten, that they felt pretty good about uh, their defensive situation? Uh, certainly, because now you're in a situation from a defensive standpoint where you know it's more than likely going to be a pass because you have done such a good job on first and second down. They showed blitz. Now Gleason's going to step up. He checked that down and was able to find Jawan Newton. He's going to move the sticks. Third and ten. Now they're saying incomplete. Jawan, I was just going to say, will that be looked at? Yeah, because initially it looked like a drop pass to me as well. And ultimately the officials, I do believe, made the right decision. But heck, we know Newton is a sure-handed receiver. As Gleason vacates the pocket, he throws to his receiver, and right here is the key part. How about the stick, huh? Yeah, stick, and it appears to me that the ball did hit the ground. Yeah, and uh, you know, yeah, Bowling Green, they have two players. You know, you can have one, two players wear number zero. One is the old world receiver, Harold Fannin. That's Darius McClendon there. 195 pound senior nickelback out of Boise Beach, Florida. It was an incomplete pass. Plays under review. Does he hold you to see my language? He's back in his play. He's fourth down. So there's one right there on, uh, by, by uh, McClendon. Oh, full display. Great job of lowering his shoulders and jarring that football ultimately loose with a very sure handed receiver, Jerron Newton, not being able to make the catch. Toledo is going to have to punt this away again, and Emilio Duran is going to hit this from about the 10 yard line and didn't hit it the way he wanted. Short return uh, for the uh, Bowling Green Falcons. Uh, Justin Pegues on that return. And the BG offense will start again and uh, Gerard Connor Bazelak the young man from Dayton uh, how about career pick he's up there with some pretty impressive company is he not this is third football team he's played with yes yeah, certainly and the fact that he's been productive with those type of numbers everywhere he's gone so you appreciate what Connor's been able to do from a passing standpoint and the key once again with him is if you let him sit back in that pocket comfortable he will pick you apart A bowling green looking to run the football and breaking out once again. Terry on Stewart. Look at the moves from Stewart. Lowering the pads. Late flag, but Stewart inside the 20. Again, he broke out of that scrum. And this is where being short in stature comes into full display and a benefit for Terry on because they're like, where is he at? I can't find him. I can't find him. He breaks to the outside where there's no containment. And then Max and Hook says, you know what? I'm going to keep you in bounds. But what does Terry on do? He cuts it back and picks up even more yards. But this may come back, Michael, because there was some extra career close. Personal foul. Blindside block. Offense, number zero. So the first down stands, but Gerard, they just got Harold Fannin Jr. for a blindside block illegally. Yeah, when Terry on is moving around like this, he's going to be in all different types of places. So you as a blocker, you're aware that he has the ability to cut back. So that puts you in the adverse spot. And that's exactly what took place as Harold caught a defender not paying attention. And back in the day, that would have been a great hit. But that's not back in the day. It's now. And now you're not allowed to do that. Different dynamics involved, aren't there, partner? Yes, sir. Yeah. 41 yard line is uh, where the football is going to be spotted as uh, our white hat referee Matt Pikowski talks about it with his officiating crew. Spot of foul was a 26 of a 15 yard penalty from that spot. 
Yeah, it looks clean from here, but we're in a day and age where Michael, if a guy gets knocked off his feet, they're going to call something. Yeah, sure. Understood. Play fake, Bazelak, short crossing route. Harold Fennin, the throw was well behind him, and Fennin wasn't able to uh, bring it in. And once again, Harold Fennin running that crosser route for Bazelak is just put him in a position where he can catch it upright and then let him do what he does, catching the ball and running afterwards. So right there, just a play in which the pass has to be much more catchable for Fannin in order to operate and do what he does very well, which is run after the catch. He does that extremely well. We're tied at seven, Bowling Green again, looking to get in plus territory and put points on the board. Off play action, Bazelak will gun that quick in route. And that's hauled in, going to come up three yards shy of the first down. As uh, making that grab for the the Bowling Green Falcons on that catch is uh, first catch of the day. For Bowling Johnson. Green, yeah, Johnson made the grab. First catch of the afternoon. Johnson's a 195-pound uh, sophomore, getting some reps now in the offense. Well, you're Bowling Green. You're in third and management. You have so many options here. You can run it, you can pass it, and you have prolific guys in positions to make plays for you on this offense. Late personnel grouping change to Rod Cherry yeah. for Jason Kendall. Bazelak off that play fake. Well, he slid down. I, I'm not sure he was aware where the first down sticks were. Well, did, did, did the flag throw that, for too many men? Okay. It has to be, and it came right. out late, but it was certainly still defenders for Toledo on the football field once the bike, once the ball was hiked. Yeah, had to be because his slide came up what would have been well short of the line to make for a first down. Legal substitution on the defense. 12 on the field. Five-yard penalty from the previous spot results in a first down. Yeah, for Toledo, you're trying to make the adjustment so you don't have a mismatch in the interior because they go heavy. But if you don't have enough guys, you don't have enough guys because then you, you ultimately give them the first down with the penalty. But I get what Coach Karras on the defensive coordinator for Toledo was trying to do, which is make the substitution so they weren't out man in the trenches. And if you're a defensive coordinator and, you know, you feel like we got latitude, we can maybe stretch it out and even make them as late as possible. Well, of course you're going to do that. Now, Bazelak trying to set up that quick throw off reverse action. It's hauled in. That's going to be a first down. Excellent throw. Excellent play design to get Rakeem Smith involved. Why did he get excellent blocking too, Gerard Jerry? Yes, he certainly did. Throw. Exactly. Nick Reimer as well as Nate Paps did an excellent job of providing a running lane for one Rakeem Smith. Being patient, not getting down the football field, that's such a key part of the screen. As you see the offensive linemen there waiting, Paps as well as Reimer, said, okay, can we go, can we go? And then they go and they pick up positive yards. Quarterback Connor Bazelak, that real well. Ooh. That inside flip. Fannin with a dive. No signal yet. No signal yet. Uh, they're going to talk. I'm not sure. Well, no signal has been given for the touchdown. No signal yet, but I tell you what. Bowling Green has opened up the play, but you're seeing misdirection here, misdirection there. Two misdirection plays within the same drive that leads ultimately to a score. So impressive what we're getting from Bowling Green on the offensive end. And right here, we told you, Fannin Jr. does an excellent job of running once the football's in his hand, and as he goes into the interior with that shuttle pass to get the touchdown. His sixth touchdown catch of the year. I looked at every one of the officiating crew. They didn't make a signal. They all must have been verbalizing. He's in the end zone. Didn't get the signal, but Fannin Jr. has his sixth touchdown catch of the year for the, to the Bowling Green Falcons. So you just get hit with a bubble screen. Then they come back with the interior screen to Fannin Jr. Ran very well. You honor the jet screen, or jet sweep rather. Fannin shows you again his athletic ability, and he hurdles a would be tackler and then finds himself ultimately in the end zone. Such a premier talent in the MAC is one Harold Fannin Jr. 6'4, 235 pounds, and 
as Scott Leffler said, he typifies what the game should be. Right. And what's so impressive to me, Michael, is that a guy with his stature and his stats stayed. Yeah. Well, and I mean, again, what did Leffler tell us uh, along with his offensive coaches? He said, look, if we tell this young man we're going to get 65 snaps and you're going to block for all of them today, he said, yeah, let's go. Let's go. Give it to me. Uh, just uh, the quintessential team guy for this football team. And I think what they were telling us is this kick will not be returnable yet once again from uh, Bowling Green Zach Long. Gerard is that he's all about this football team and not about his whatever his personal accolades and tributes to him may be. Exactly. And that block in which he got hit for blindside blocking, like I said, in most situations, that would be considered a great job. You're going to get a high five and cheer to get a sticker on your helmet. So that shows you right there that he's committed to other guys besides his own stats. For well, the second time this afternoon now, Tucker Gleason, the talented Toledo quarterback, and his offense got to respond. They're going to go jet motion and sweep. Boy, and Junior Van der Ross paid a price. Van der Ross got absolutely laid out. That hit for Bowling Green came uh, out of the secondary from Patrick Day. That's right. Patrick Day has probably the hit of the day. That's what you call lifting the guy up and body slamming him. Great aggressive football play on the part of Patrick Day. And that's what you expect on what? A rivalry game? This type of intensity. This is what you want. No question as we approach the two minute mark of the first quarter. Gleason going to take a shot deep. A little bit of contact there as he was looking to find uh, his wide receiver, Thomas Zyros. Excellent coverage there out of that Bowling Green secondary by Jordan uh, Oladokun. Where's number one? Coaches told us Oladokun playing very, very well. And right there, he put that on display because Zyros was pleading to the officials, hey, he passed an interference speed. No, he did not. That's just tight, great coverage in which he was playing the football just like you. Of course, Gerard Jerry's going to say it's no P.I. <laughs> Yeah. Very nice. I'm, I'm, I'm messing with you, partner. No, you're right. No objectivity. The, <laughs> <laughs> the quick throw from Gleason is hauled in as he hooked up with Junior Vandeross. Gerard in Junior Vandeross, the, the Jawan Newton and Vandeross is down right now. Uh, Vandeross uh, down after he made that catch on the short throw and was taken down, but. Good to see Vandeross up quickly. Gerard, can we make a case though that in Junior Vandeross and Jawan Newton, you're talking about, you know, again, arguably, but maybe right up there anyway with the premier receiving duos in the Mid American Conference? Oh, no doubt about it. And again, well, they have next to their name, Florida. And they're from the same area, St. Pete and Tampa. Yeah. So I'm not surprised by the level of speed that they possess, but you love the production that they provide as well. Now Gleason going to go back to the ground game with Savon Clark. Maybe got one up near the 40 yard line. Uh, Gerard, the net. Uh, we've been very impressed so far. This back seven for Bowling Green, they have been dynamic in the way they've gone after the football today. Whether it's been running backs or receivers, they like to come up and hit as a group. Yeah, very aggressive. And you love the fact that you see the gap integrity. You see guys in the right spots to make these plays as well. But yes, you are impressed so far what you're seeing out of this Bowling Green defense. Second and nine as we come inside 60 seconds in the opening quarter. Gleason got rid of it in a hurry. This is Junior Vandeross. Well, Vandeross looked like he was going to get rolling, and then again, as we said, short circuited the hit came Number once two, again. Helmet, helmet came off. Call for a play. From the work out of the uh, the Bowling Green back seven, Brock Horn on the, the hit the there. To 49 seconds. 49 seconds. And you're seeing Bowling Green gang tackle. You see them be very physical when they're making these plays, Michael, in that they don't just tackle you. They are hitting you extremely hard, and Junior has been, unfortunately, a beneficiary of several of those hard hits. Co-defensive coordinators for Scott Leffler, Sammy Lawanson, and Steve Morris. Gleason with pressure. Oh. What an outstanding one-half hand grab. Give me that football, huh? Said
pressure one. Newton on that crossing round. He knew he was going to take a shot, too, didn't he? And that's the most impressive part about it all, Michael. You know you're going to extend your body and be in a position where you can hit hard by a safety. But that doesn't slow Newton down as he pulls that ball in with one hand with the catch of the day thus far. Nice grab on the part of Juwan Newton. 32. 22 yards on that hookup. Newton extended and one-handed that grab and hauled it in. Big play, play Toledo. Clock. We set it to 32 seconds. Thank you. And here, referee Matt Pakowski. We're going to reset the game clock to 32 seconds. Toledo now on the move, trailing uh, by seven here. And as we come inside the half-minute mark in quarter number one. Back to the ground game. Well, not much there again. The heavy hitting comes out of the Bowling Green secondary as running back Connor Wallenzak uh, got uh, got head up quickly. And on that Bowling Green hit again was Joseph Sip. And they're missing the element of dynamic play in the running back position with Jacquez Stewart not being available and Willie Shaw has not been available as well. So for this Bowling Green, excuse That's me, Toledo offense. Time. Simply put, get more active with this balance of the run and pass attack. And we'll develop that more. We've seen jo Jacquez Stewart, the outstanding starting running back with the one carry here in the opening quarter. Bowling Green has got a 14-7 lead on Toledo in the Battle of I-75 in the MAC. No, no, no. He's really big. For savings and Pizza, pizza. Just try. And this glass bowl stadium, I mean, is filled to the brim today. Jason Candle. We'll tell you more about him in a moment. For now, second and eleven for Tucker Gleason. Pressure coming. Gleason's throw nowhere near the intended receiver as uh, they were looking to get Anthony Torres out into that uh, that route. But how about the job this man has done? Ninth season as a head coach. Uh, he virtually has uh, won two of every three football games he's played. And for Toledo, more importantly, trust me when I tell you that six and two against Bowling Green. Oh, does nice. that carry a lot of weight, right, buddy? It certainly does. Anytime you have a rivalry game and you're winning more than you're losing, that's going to help your cause. Toledo will empty out the formation. Pressure coming. Gleason's throw got hauled in, but Bowling Green again is all over that defensively as the throw that was hauled in by Junior Vanderross. There is Joe Sip again, Gerard Cherry. Excellent defense on the part of Bowling Green in that you had the perfect call. You have a very aggressive Bowling Green defense trying to attack Gleason. You have the screen diagnosed, but because of the fact that Sip has been playing out of his mind thus far in this game, he makes the play. How about a 53-yard field goal attempt to coming up here? Mm -hmm. Dylan Kunanen got a lot of leg. That line drive shot. He hit it. He snuck it inside that right upright. From 53 yards out. Insanity. Doing the same thing over and over and expecting it wouldn't change this. That's how Car insurance. Medic. If I was described, I right, go. And then you also have. The right now. Yeah. We're gonna go with 54 yards on that field goal make. A 54 yarder from Kunanen and Gerard Cherry. He had a few yards to spare, did he not? It certainly did. Now I didn't reach the sky from a height standpoint, but it certainly was effective in that it went right between the uprights. And he probably could have made it from 57 to 58 yards, Michael. All it needs is to be 10 feet and one inch as long as it's inside, right? That's Getting all that 10 matters. 10 feet and an inch to get across right. that crossbar. It doesn't cross have bar. to be scenic or pretty, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. 
That's exactly right. Good one going on here. You wouldn't expect anything less. Just one game going back to 1952 separates Toledo and Bowling Green from five yards deep coming out of the end zone for Bowling Green. Young man, uh, Rakeem Smith, he's got a lot of flair about him. Calvert High High School, Calvert Hall High School in Baltimore, Maryland. Rakeem Smith, the Bowling Green kick returner. Yeah, Rakeem living dangerously right there. Most would tell you to stay down that kneel. Do not bring it out of the end zone, but to his credit, he got it past the 20 yard line. Yeah, and this is the, uh, if you want to call it the worst field position that Bowling Green will start drives with. They've started from Toledo's 45, their own 35, and own 46. So this one from the 21 yard line for Connor Bazelak. Bazelak going to keep the football. Connor Bazelak showing us. They don't think I can't use my legs to run. Bazelak quickly got 17 yards of the first down. And this is what we call a nice wrinkle in that no one's anticipating Bazelak running with the football. And on top of that, you use Harold Fannin Jr. as a decoy. Excellent design and play of a defense overreacting to one particular player in Fannin Jr. Harold Fannin Jr. is uh, decoy. Yeah, well, yeah, he's in the seam down there, right down to the bottom of uh, the screen. Back to the ground game. Jamal Johnson. Johnson's got 11 more yards on the ground. Why is Bowling Green running the football so effectively today? Because they have so many options. You don't know what they want to do. But look about this play, Michael, is that he's faking the jet sweep. But he says, you know what? I put on the brakes, and I'm going to go up the field because the defense is over-anticipating the ball going to the outside. But right now, Bowling Green is what we call their bag, and that they're having so much success running these offensive plays. In their bag. Yeah, I didn't mean to intimate that they're not a, a solid run team. Or if you got number four on your football team operated in your backfield, Terry on Stewart. That first down carry. Stewart just got six, maybe seven. We'll see with them. Give them six officially. Second down and four. But Gerard, this Bowling Green offense averages 136 yards per game on the ground for that man, Scott Leffler, and seventh in the Mid-American Conference. Getting it blocked and running it very well today. Yes, the misdirection, typical plays, rudimentary plays. You're seeing all type of plays, but they're all having what success? Already 102 yards on the ground. Middle screen. But well, Toledo had that defended very, very well as a Bazelak through that middle screen and got the football. Uh, hauled in. Making that catch for uh, Bowling Green there was Jamal Johnson. Yeah, and Coach Leffler talked about the fact that he has such dynamic players on his roster along with what that represents. And Max Warner said, Max, high five you, give you props, because what we're seeing from you thus far today is so impressive. But again, they have playmakers on the squad for Bowling Green. You're starting to see these guys show up and show out. How will they show up and show out on third and one here? Direct snap. Guess who? Harold Fannin Jr. on third and one. Give him four. Direct snap now. You know, I think maybe they intimated to us that this could be in the repertoire, but there we get example and exhibit A of it. And here's the impressive part for me, Michael. He is met at the line of scrimmage, but his strength, his ability, and his want and desire to get that first down was greater than the defenders as he pushes them forward to get tough yards for a first down. All right, that's his fourth carry of the season. Fourth carry of the year. He's now got 44 yards on those four carries and a touchdown. Harold Fannin, Jr. Now the throwing, finding Fannin. How about that? They brought in backup quarterback Lucian Anderson the third. So in the last three snaps for Bowling Green, they've been to three quarterbacks. Connor Bazelak, Harold Fannin, and now Lucian Anderson, the young backup. And when Lucian comes in the game, the assumption is it's going to be a run. But they're playing against the tendencies right now, Bowling Green, and saying, no, we're going to fool you and trick you and actually throw a pass platter to our phenomenal tight end, Harold Fannin Jr. Bowling Green on the move again. Bazelak, that late pitch. Beautiful. 
beautifully done inside the five, depending on the spot. The late pitch went to Jamal Johnson. Jamal Johnson, along with Terrion Stewart, Gerard, a huge factor today. Yeah, totally a big factor in that you have so many guys that you can go to from a weapon standpoint and just get the job done. Everyone's being effective that's getting their number called today for Bowling Green on this offensive side of the ball with their skill set players. 16 yards on that Jamal Johnson carry. Stewart will operate to the left, the cornerback Connor Bazelak. Two receivers, top of the uh, the screen in this formation. Off that play fake, Bazelak going to get pushed out of bounds. Now that I don't want to see out of Bazelak. I don't want to see you absorbing any type of hits. I don't want to see you run into the boundary to a lot of defenders. I want you either throwing the football or pitching to someone else. But that's a challenging play when you go to the boundary because obviously you have the sideline to help you as a defender. Gerard Cherry, how about Max and Hook, man? I mean, you know. Talking about this senior, the 205-pounder, uh, NFL. Going to be an NFL right. player. Emmanuel McNeil Warren's going to be an NFL player. Braden Knowles, he's probably going to be an NFL player, although he has two more years of eligibility <laughs> yes, here. Yes, he is a baller in his own right. He's become a DB University here. Play fake. Bazelak. End zone. It is caught. Touchdown. Bowling Green. Boy, the Falcons scheming that up beautifully. And we're able to go to Levi Gazerik. Gazerik made the grab. Misdirection, misdirection. And when you have the running game clicking the way it is for Bowling Green right now, what do you have to do as a defender for Toledo? You have to honor those pass fakes and assume that it is the run. You get it right there, play action. You fake the block at your Levi, and then you find yourself wide open. Phenomenal play call of taking advantage of the fact that your offense is cooking with the running game and using that play action fake. Uh, yeah, big tight end, 6'5, 255 pounds. Adding that PAT is Zach Long and hey, Scott Leffler and his co offensive coordinators, Greg Nassal and Max Warner. Gerard Cherry, they've got this offense humming and thinking end zone today. We'll tell you more when we get back. 21-10, Bowling Green. This isn't for work. It's a little shit. It's a baby line. Every month. That's my line. Because offense today, mm, they are making things look real nice for those wearing the orange and brown. The main man of that is Scott Leffler, the former Michigan Wolverine quarterback under Lloyd Carr in the, the 90s. He also coached there. There's the coaching resume, uh, of course. But, I mean, you know, uh, he's got things rolling right now. And offensively, the man uh, and his offenses are very creative. Yeah, and it's been on full display. You're watching a master class on how you design misdirection, typical passing and running plays as well. But everything seems to be clicking and working for this Bowling Green offensive unit. Very impressive what I've seen thus far and how they're able to design to get guys open and just basically dominate at the point of attack and get the job done. Gerard Cherry, we saw that resume for uh, head coach Scott Leffler, one of his close friends at Michigan. Fellow that you know very, very well, that you used to drive to practice in games with, fellow by the name Brady. That's right. Tom Brady. Tom, yeah. The man, the myth, the legend, the goat. <laughs> but here's the deal, Michael. Misdirection here. You don't expect left foot, left foot to have his quarterback back running the football, but what does he do? He runs it well. Then right here, you have a jet sweep. Nope. We have an interior run instead. So everything that you think is about to take place is not occurring. And then once again, Bazelak with the pitch because he's not known for doing what? Option quarterback play. He's supposed to be a pocket passer. Great job of selling defense on one thing, but giving them something else. Yep. No, you're so right, partner. All right. Uh, how imperative is it that Toledo has got to get their run game rolling? It's so key. And right now they've had an issue with doing just that. One dimensional on the offensive side of the ball. A quick throw to the outside, hauled in by Jawan Newton as quarterback Tucker Gleason. Again, just on that quick throw to his outstanding wide receiver, Newton. Toledo was able to get six there, so we'll we'll call it second down. Let's call it second down of four. All right, six, four. 
the throw from Gleason to Newton. Yeah, those are successful plays, Michael. But the key part is where are the chunk plays for Toledo? Where are those explosives at? Pressure coming. Gleason's throw too tall. Far over the head of Jawan Newton is going to bring up third down and four now. And, you know, I, again, I know it's early. But partner, would you agree on the last thing Toledo can have, maybe emotionally many, is a three and out here. Right. That's the worst thing that could take place for them is putting that Bowling Green offense back on the football field. But the running game is going to have to step up to help Gleason get to a place to where it's not all on him. Because we can't forget he's overcoming or trying to come back rather from injury. Big third down play. That throw is hauled in. That's going to move the sticks. First down. They went to running back Connor Wallenzak. We've seen Jacquez Stewart uh, one play, Gerard. One play today, the outstanding lead running back for the Toledo Rockets. He was uh, in for one play inside the five yard line in a goal line look for Toledo in the first quarter. And I have to assume that with the magnitude of this game, him not playing, that something must not be right on the health front. Yeah. Well, Toledo was able to move the sticks here behind quarterback Tucker Gleason, the veteran from Tampa, Florida. Quick play fake. Gleason will get that throw out quickly in the slot, hauled in. He found a wide receiver, Thomas Zyros. Zyros, a local young man, went to a real strong football program in the city of Toledo, St. John's High School. And uh, has started to work his way into this receiving core for Jason Candle. Yeah, and plays like that will help the cause. If you pick up eight yards on first down, that's certainly going to get the job done. But we're seeing more of a patient, methodical approach right now from Toledo on the offensive side of the ball. Wallenzak trying to bounce outside. Good move, Connor Wallenzak. He was able to bounce outside and step out of a tackle. Positive yardage on that uh, Toledo carry. That's right, a first down, and Wallenzak says, hey, Gerard, don't minimize or underestimate me. I got a little bit of wiggle in my game. He was showing you, huh? <laughs> yes, sir. Uh -huh. <laughs> you come up and try to hit me, Mr. Safety. <laughs> so now into Bowling Green territory for this Toledo offense. They're trailing by 11 here in the second quarter. Wallen Zach again, not much there. Bowling Green uh, got up on that hit. Bowling Green's front seven really getting to the football today. And that was Evan Branch Haynes. Haynes is a big 300 pound junior. Started his career at uh, Arizona, played for the Wildcats and then Scott Leffler got him from there. Yeah, for the most part, what you're seeing out of this Bowling Green defense is that they're reestablishing the line of scrimmage in the backfield of Toledo. Second and 11 now for Tucker Gleason. Off play action. Pocket broke down. Gleason trying to make something happen with the legs. He uh. did. Uh, I think a lot of the Toledo fans thinking maybe uh, they could have got a horse collar flag there. Horse collar. Let's look. Targeting, they're asking for it all, but Gleese is normally more fleet of feet than this, but he does the right decision, but I would like to see him slide as opposed to absorbing those hits because they cannot afford to lose his skill set if he has to go out due to an injury. He got dragged down from behind. Ali Sa, the 280-pound senior. For Bowling Green started his career as a Minnesota Gopher. All right, third and nine now. Gleason, pressure coming. Crossing route. Not going to get there as uh, tight end Anthony Torres. Gerard, I'm going to tell you again, the back seven, territory here. Yeah, the back seven, though, for, uh, for Bowling Green, got to be impressed with the way they're coming up and making hits, especially in space. Solo hits. That's an excellent point because you're not seeing what? Runs after the catch. You see him guys as soon as they make contact go down to the ground and that is so key But right here is key and pivotal to this football game. They're gonna have to pick up this first down They need to rather to continue this drive to keep in points With Bowling Green Jason Candle's offense 10 of 18 on fourth down Conversions Gleason in trouble Gleason got to the sticks first down Rockets uh, how about Tucker Gleason stumbling but managed to stay uh, uh, on top of it and get to the sticks. And Tucker fought Bowling Green, he fought the turf monster, he fought a bunch of things, but he managed to keep his feet, and that's the most important thing because he's finding himself past those sticks for another Toledo first down. 
Well, again, I, we're inside five left in the first half. But again, if you're Toledo, but you want points right. out of this possession, down by 11. So Tucker Gleason able to move the sticks. And now we're going to get Jason Candle getting a uh, quick timeout. That's his first of the second half. All right, don't go away. Toledo on the Oh, I don't put honey pepper for no cheese. to the NBA playoff. All right, on this. And 26 minutes and some change of football. Their Bowling Green Falcons have a 21 10 lead on the Toledo Rockets. Great to have you along on uh, ESPN. Michael Regai, my partner Gerard Cherry, producer Stas Hall, director Anthony Giassi, all of our crew is uh, we take a look here at the Toledo uh, brain trust, the offensive side of things, Mike Hallett. And the offensive crew, Gleason with time, tried to gun that throw. That's hauled in. That's close to the sticks. Making that uh, Toledo rocket grab is Eric Holly the third. Holly's a young man. I saw him play in high school. He's uh, an Akron guy, Gerard Cherry, from Akron East. And to his credit, Tucker Gleason let it be known from jump who was going to throw that football team. Now go back to the ground game. Savon Clark, just not much there. Not there. Just not much there. As this Bowling Green defensive line again continues. Anthony Hawkins there, the big 300 pounder from Mansfield High School here in the Buckeye State. Yeah, he's definitely the man because what he's doing right now from just controlling the trenches. He is shutting down everything that Toledo wants to do as far as running the ball is concerned and really making them one dimensional only being able to pass to be effective offensively. Second and 11 now for quarterback Tucker Gleason play action pressure coming his throw got broken up at the last moment. Jawan Newton was going up to make that grab and how about C.J. Brown there's Brown. 200 pound boundary safety out of Canton, Michigan, Wald Lake High School. And give Gleason credit for being able to pass his football, but he's getting the pressure, and you're just seeing a plethora of defenders just in his face. And right there, Trent Sims is on the scene, but Newton almost comes down with a cir circus catch in the process. But great job again on the part of the Bowling Green defense. They are simply balling. Yeah, I love the way you break that down, partner. Absolutely. The line to make at the 17-yard line. Gleason, quick throw, hauled in. Inside the 10 with speed for the Toledo Rockets. And oh, did Junior Vanderos need to provide that? The speed of Vanderos on display there. Hey, get the football to uh, those speedy wideouts, Gerard. That's right, and also get the help from some friends and Anthony Torres right there tight end. But Toledo does a great job of helping spring Vanderos to that boundary area to pick up those positive yards. Well, again, Junior Vanderos, Jawan Newton, such a load to deal with off the play fake. Gleason powers his way into the end zone. Tucker Gleason, touchdown. Rockets and Tucker Gleason says yeah you want a phenomenal run you want some action you want to see me show you how you sidestep a defender and get a positive play that's exactly what he just did and put it on full display I did not know Tucker had that type of run to build in of Michael this is fleet footed this is showing a skill set and a will and desire that I'm going to get an end zone and keep my team in this game his third rushing touchdown of the year Tucker Gleason 170 yards plus in the ground for this season on the ground for Gleason. But you know, you don't, he's not looked upon as a guy that's going to pull it down and use the legs. More of a pocket drop back passer in this Toledo offense. Yeah, that's a fair point because we know he has some symbols of a dual threat capability, but this right here. This is some Tim Tebow esque type of running and how he just ran that football. Wow. Very impressive. Uh, you gotta love this back and forth we go. Toledo were, you know, found themselves down 11, but uh, they responded. We said as they started that drive, points are very, very important here. 
And quarterback Tucker Gleason in that rocket offense said, yeah, we know that, and got their way into the end zone. Yes, and they did it in a very methodical manner and fashion. It's going to take that. Any way you can get the job done. So right now we're seeing with Toledo that they have to go the not-so-explosive play route in order to get the job done. And for this Bowling Green Falcons team, they've just been explosive across the board. And with 2 minutes and 58 seconds remaining in this half, that's plenty of time based upon what we've seen for them to go down the football field because they have been simply marching down it all day long. Yeah, the Bowling Green offense today, they have uh, put together um, close to 200 yards of total offense in this first half. Toledo's right there with them as well. 189 for Bowling Green, 184 for Toledo. So both offenses, you know, maybe on the cusp of 400 yard days. And the difference between the two is that Toledo has seen the longer fields while Bowling Green is operating more so on short fields. So Bowling Green going to get the football back. Non returnable this time. <laughs> I always wait to see because we see Raheem Smith. He doesn't mind bringing it out from deep in that end zone. All right, let's go back and take a look at Gleason on the touchdown run. Yeah, and Gleason has some words to say to C.J. Brown about him trying to talk to him. Obviously, he get pushed right there. You don't like that, but I love him. My quarterback is like, you can't stop me. You can't hold me down. You don't have to push your own teammate, but in the process, I love the intensity on the part of one Tucker Gleason. Yeah, how much an effect, a positive effect, does that have on a whole football team when a quarterback shows his toughness and unwillingness to be messed with? Oh, that's motivation in a half. So now it's Bowling Green back to the oh. offense. That's an outstanding takedown. Toledo defensively as Terrion Stewart wasn't able to get rolling. He got pulled down from behind by Lance Dixon. Dixon, the senior Mike linebacker. Uh, what did uh, defensive coordinator Vince Karras tell us? The skill set he has to do everything we need him to do in our defense makes him very special to us. And that was a special play. Whenever you can track down Terry Hunster from the backside and bring him down by yourself, you've accomplished something. Yeah, first tackle for loss today. Now we've got uh, whistles here in front of the Toledo bench. Now the whistles uh, came, like I said, in front of the Toledo bench. Came from uh, the side judge. And uh, we're going to stay right here. 219 left in this uh, second quarter. Well, only great to Toledo get together. You can count on games going down to the wire. Last year at Doit Perry Stadium. Look at the fourth quarter. Toledo found themselves uh, down a couple of touchdowns going into the fourth quarter, and Gerard Cherry, they were able to pull out that 32 to 31 win, 819 combined yards, and both Jacquez Stewart had the big one, the 59-yard touchdown run that ultimately won it. Right, and they're obviously missing his services right now because we haven't seen much of them, but we are certainly in for what we call a dandy. Yeah, second down to 11 now for Connor Bazelak. He's going to gun that in route. Mm. Well, Malcolm Johnson made the grab, but Malcolm Johnson right away. Avery Smith said, make that catch, and then feel the pads pound here as he put the hit on him. You caught it, but you would not go an inch further. I am seeing excellent open field tackling on the part of both these defenses today, Michael. Without question, we've amplified that through the course of the first half. Two-minute timeout. Bowling Green by four over Toledo. A flood of illegals, skyrocketing prices, global chaos, and Kamala wouldn't change a thing. Would you have done something differently than President Biden during the past four years? Uh, there is not a thing that comes to mind. Nothing will change with Kamala. Let's go to our next segment, Fairest Calls, inspired by Geico's fair and fast 24-7 claims service. Do we have to do the Geico stuff while I'm here? It's just like things in service. Yeah. And, and customers. Plus. To the end. It's Vince Karras. 
course, his father, Larry, the legendary Mount Union Purple Raiders championship winning football coach for a couple of decades. Big play here. In trouble is Bowling Green's Connor Bazelak, and down he goes. One of the few times today, Michael, where you questioned the play call on the part of the offense for Bowling Green in that you had all your playmakers to the left side of the football field, and you're once again saying, okay, we're going to lure them here, but hey, there's nowhere to go with the football. And also, you're finally getting some penetration on the part of Lance Dixon and company for Toledo. Well, Dixon has been terrific the last couple of series. The young man out of Oak Park High School, that uh, real strong football program that's uh, in near the city of Detroit in Michigan and it's his third program now Lance Dixon began his career at Penn State and then he went to West Virginia before Jason Candle and got him back here with this Toledo Rocket program two big plays on his part in that drive yeah. right there on the defensive side of the ball for Toledo Lance Dixon and his mates trying to uh, Bowling Green at bay. They forced him to punt the football away. Still plenty of time. Minute and 55 less left in this second quarter. Zach Long, the Bowling Green punter, going to hit it from the 15 yard line. Didn't get a lot on it. Excellent field position coming up for the Toledo offense with an opportunity to, with a touchdown, to regain the lead here before halftime. The only thing that's going to be a problem for them is the clock management in that they don't have any timeouts, so it's going to be imperative that you are very understanding what it's going to require you of situational football to get the job done. Partner, but with a veteran quarterback. I mean, uh, can that become a, you trust him? Of course, you have great confidence in him. You feel like he, well, at the end of timeouts, he's going to use the clock well, do the proper things, and we can still advance the football and look to put points on the board. Certainly. But the question becomes, can this offensive line hold up? Because of, for the most part, it's been about Bowling Green getting penetration and dominating the trenches, putting a lot of pressure on Tucker Gleason. Kind of Wallenzak is the, uh, the running back offset of Tucker Gleason. They'll start from the 40-yard line. This is Wallenzak. Tough run. Got seven before he got pulled down and taken to the ground. That Bowling Green defensive stop again from Brock Horn. Horn, one of the active linebackers for Bowling Green. Gleason coming middle. That's hauled in. Jawan Newton made the grab. First down, Toledo. Move those sticks. So they got the six yard run from Wallenzek. But they love the shallow crosses, partner, don't they? Yes, they do. They're really doing everything you're not supposed to do, per se. Oh, they got picked off. That's intercepted. Jordan Oladokun to the house. Touchdown, Oladokun and Bowling Green. Can you say sudden change from the Bowling Green defensive group? You certainly can. You can also say, Tucker Gleason, you cannot stare down your receiver because if you're going to do that, guess what? A defensive back is going to make a play as he tried to throw that out pattern, but he did not put enough in on that out pattern. As you see, you stand at your receiver. You can't do that because, again, the defensive back is taught to do what? Watch the eyes of the quarterback. So you have to make sure that you look one direction and then you go the opposite way. But, again, give Ola Duncan great credit for, one, being a DB and catching it and then taking it to the house. Absolutely. Pick six, Jordan Ola Duncan. Well, that's a backbreaker, and they get the ball back at the half, that being Bowling Green after the half. Let's take a couple more looks at the way Jordan. Did, did he play possum with Tucker Gleason here, partner? He didn't even have to play possum. Michael, Tucker Gleason told you where he was going with the football. That was a coaching point. I'm sure that they said, hey, Gleason will tell you where he's going with the football. And to their credit, they listened to the coaching point, and there you have it. Break on the football, and you have to put more on that play. He threw to the wide side of the football field, so if you're going to throw that pass, you better have some RPMs on that bad boy, because if you don't, that's exactly what's going to occur. You know, Gerard, the coaches tell us a lot that they want uh, wide receivers to turn into defensive backs in a situation like that. I'm not sure Juwan. There's nothing he could have done about that. Couldn't he? Didn't no. even have 
have an opportunity to do that. Well, because he was waiting on the football coming out of his break. So what does that tell you? That tells you that Tucker also wasn't able to put some oomph into the pass as well. Tucker Gleason, that uh, is the fifth time he's been picked off this 2024 season. The first one that has uh, come back on him in the pick six category. Bowling Green back up by 11 again. Toledo had cut it down to four and Bowling Green with the defensive TD. All right on this Toledo rocket return and it's a good one for Toledo on that return uh, from the Rockets. Jacquez Stewart their top running back 44 yard return. Well you know when the number one running backs get back uh, returning kickoffs that uh, you know head coach is saying we need something out of this our special teams. Well my question is why is he being employed into the normal offensive unit because of that right there sure. shows you how explosive he is and obviously he's not hurt because he almost took that to the house. Yeah, and Jacquez Stewart, if you watch it follow Toledo football, you know he's their top running back, has been for a couple of seasons, uh, but very few snaps today. Big kickoff return there for the, the Rockets. Gleason going to see him, it is hauled in. That's Junior Venderos inside the 30 to the 28 yard line before he got thrown out of bounds. I'm going to tell you again, partner, you played back there, but I. I don't know if I want to have to be the DBs and deal with Newton and Vandeross all the time. Oh, they're good. <laughs> well, you might want to go to a zone concept so you don't have to deal with them on a man to man concept. Yeah. Whistles. That's going to cost Toledo five. Mm. Any movement from that offensive line before the start. Again, Matt. Pekowski is our referee okay. today. That's him with the white hat. Ball start. Offense. Number 81. Five yard penalty. First down. Please set the game clock to 46 seconds. Thank you. Gerard, how about the, the Bowling Green takeaway situation for Scott Leffler from well, last year to this? Well, last year was incredible. This year has been slow, but today they're definitely on point, and that pick six certainly will get the job done. Gleason with pressure from behind. A throw hauled in again. Jawan Newton moved those chains down to the 12 yard line. Newton Gleason very accurate and efficient there. Hang on though. We've got that flag that's going to bring that back. Holding offense on 79. 10 yard penalty. First down. And right now for Toledo, they're getting in their own way, and that you've had two untimely penalties hold you back. And you just have to make sure in these situations that you do a better job. And for Allen Jones, you cannot hold. You have to make sure that you are beating around that edge, that you get better footing so that you don't allow that to take place. Allen Jones, big 305 pounder. He prepped the Detroit Cast Tech. They don't hold up there. <laughs> I wonder why you say that. <laughs> that throw across the seam. Junior Vandeross. Vandeross again crossing routes continue to hurt Bowling Green from this Toledo wide receiving quarter trying to line up quick of course clock at 22 seconds now chains move and we also have down at the goal line a Bowling Green injury cannot identify as of yet whom that is Toledo they're out of timeouts and for, to, for Bowling Green, that's Joseph Sip Jr. He's been nothing but phenomenal today so far for his football team. And that was very fortuitous for Toledo in that they have no timeout. So that stops the clock and allows them to get a bread and butter play into the mix so they can try to get a score. So being helped to his feet by the Bowling Green training staff, Joseph Sip. Oh, he's had a. a Couple of uh, solo tackles today. 225 pound junior out of Hillsboro High. Another very strong program in Tampa, Florida. Crossing routes, isolation route. Yeah, Matt Bukowski starting his clock after the injury. Gleason 
will step up. Tucker Gleason will step out of bounds on the move. Will still spot that and probably right at the 12-yard line. 13 ticks left. Should be able to two plays for sure, Gerard. Hey, you know, you do it right. Could get three if you need them. Good decision making on the part of Tucker Gleason. Did not force it to an area where it did not belong. Picked up some positive yards and got out of bounds to stop the clock. Toledo trying to make a dent into this 11 point bowling green lead. And now Scott Leffler wants the Falcons timeout to talk to his defense. 30 second timeout. Yeah, well, you're definitely telling your defense right now. They are going to the end zone, but you also have to be conscientious of the fact that they have done a great job of doing what? The horizontal stretching of the defense and that they oh, have yeah. a lot of guys crossing and they're finding a way because they're such excellent route runners of getting the job done and getting yards after the catch. Overall Big Ten linebacker there when he played for the Michigan Wolverines, uh, Steve Morrison, co-defensive coordinator of this uh, Falcons defense. Uh, of course, uh, Along with uh, Sammy Lawanson. Their uh, backs are up against it now. This Toledo offense. Second and five. Tucker Gleason moving the football. Gleason stepping up again. Check down. Put it in the hands of Junior Vandeross, who stepped out of bounds before he took a hit potentially from Joseph Sipp. Yeah, what we're seeing right now from a defensive concept is cover four in which they're saying, okay, we're going to reroute the slot guy or the tight end and make sure that he doesn't get a free release, but we're going to play coverage behind. Uh, Gerard, now you got to be careful. I mean, if a football was caught or uh, a receiver running back went down inside the, uh, you know, inside uh, this 10 yard line, not, there's no way they're going to get the field goal team out. Right. Third down and two, although, Timeout. right? Green. The clock the were to half. move the sticks if they picked up the first down on third and two. But still, they moved the sticks, spot the football quickly. You'd have to run that field goal team out there very quickly. And you wonder if Coach Campbell is considering, hey, let's just get the field goal opportunity to give you 20 points because you're going to go to the end zone on this play. Yeah. And if you get tackled inbounds, more than likely, as you just described, Michael, it's going to be halftime. Yeah. Oh, there's a, a look at the young man we just mentioned. That's Sammy Lawanson. He and Steve Morrison, the co-defensive coordinator. Now, Sammy Lawanson says that uh, he made a play on you back in the day. Is that true? It wasn't on me, but he did make it on the Hall of Famer. That being one Tony Gonzalez. <laughs> That's great. Tell you more later on. Gleason firing end zone. Threw it out of the end zone. Two seconds left on the clock. Oh, Gleason, uh, that astute. That's a veteran quarterback. Smart move. Right? Nothing there. Throw the football up in the sixth row so we can at least get the field goal team out. Exactly. Do not force the issue. Three points is better than zero. And obviously, you want the touchdown, but you can't beat Yuri. Because, like they say, pigs get fat, hogs get slaughtered. And you don't want, want to make a poor decision in the process. Heard it said that way before, partner. Yeah. Out of the hold of uh, Emilio Duran, Dylan Kunan, and officially a 26 yard field goal attempt. 27 yard field goal attempt. He'll hit that, put three on the board for the Toledo Rockets. That'll be the final snap before halftime. Gets Toledo back into a one possession deficit against that man, Scott Leffler, and his Bowling Green Falcons. Well, how about that offense in the first? Gerard, they put four touchdowns on the board. Did those fellas in uh, in the orange and brown from down I-75 in Bowling Green. Big first half for them. Yeah, once they received the football on the short field, they were clicking on all cylinders. To the credit of this Toledo Rocket defense, though, in the second quarter, the latter stages of it, they started to figure things out and slow this offensive attack down. But it was prolific early on, one of the more impressive offensive outputs and design of plays and execution that you'll see in all of football. Don't go anywhere. We have the makings of a phenomenal second half coming in this battle of I-75 here in Northwest Ohio. Bowling Green with those four touchdowns have a 28-20 lead on Toledo at halftime.
it's the cynics. No time for the talk. Our house, man. No time for the gimmicks. Feel the top and ready to blow up with the flag in the air. We ready to go. It's going to be caught for a touchdown. Are you kidding me? It's a phenomenon. They just go on and on. Talk is so blah, blah, blah. Matches be solid now. Say less. Liberty Mutual customized my panels will be played at traditional New Year Six bowl game locations. Other put a fight in there. Obviously, Tucker Gleason wants that pick six back. But other than that, this is one of the more competitive games that I've seen through the course of the MAC. Unquestionably, Maxion will never disappoint. Let's take a look at what Nets Sweep brings. In the Mid-American Conference, a Buffalo goes into Akron's courses a week from today, November the 2nd, Toledo, Eastern Michigan. Bowling Green goes to uh, Central Michigan. And uh, then, well, that's Tuesday, the following week. So there's the two next Saturday, and then midweek action starts after that, Tuesday and Wednesday, November 5th and 6th. So a lot of strong football games that will decide positioning and again there's no east and west divisions any longer top two teams in the mac play at ford field in downtown detroit in the mac championship game right right now with western michigan being the only undefeated team in the mac a lot of parity taking place so it is so imperative with that schedule next week that these teams will find themselves right now in the running get the job done all right that's coming up next week got a lot to go in the final 30 minutes here to decide a winner toledo and bowling green 28 20 to bowling green by eight when we get back now the commercial space wow this is great what you said about financing and tax implications have i'm on the next level in the process of once again play where Levi process of scoring that touchdown. Well, let's take a look at how this first 30 minutes of football unfolded. And it started with Terry on Stewart, Gerard Terry, powering his way into the end zone. Exactly, showing you why he's such a dynamic running back. But hey, Tucker Gleason said, I can find my go-to guy in Jawan Newton in the process of scoring that touchdown. But then Fannin Jr. got involved and said, let me get in this mix, one of the best tight ends in the nation. And then you have the misdirection play where Levi finds himself wide open in the corner of the end zone. And then Tucker Gleason does a tough, tough run on the Bowling Green defense, but then he makes a crucial and critical mistake in that he gave up a pick six to one Jordan Oladokion in the process of once again allowing Bowling Green to extend that lead. You know, pull up uh, your favorite chair, maybe a beverage you like too. The second half, final 30 minutes in the Battle of Northwest Ohio going to be premium today. Strong return, Bowling Green. They've had two of them today to the 34-yard line. As uh, once again, as we're going to take a look at the first half stats, but the uh, the Falcons getting a lot. Raheem Smith, strong return. Gerard, what do you see? Uh, has Toledo got to run the ball better than they did in the first half? Less than three yards a carry to win this? Well, they certainly do need to do just that because they've been very one-dimensional, and that's a lot of what the defense for Bowling Green to pretty much dictate what they're going to do. But the thing that's deceptive in those numbers is that Bowling Green has operated so much on a shorter field, hence why the numbers are what they are. All right. Counter Bay's lack. 225-pound senior quarterback with Terrion Stewart. Offset to his right. Stewart on the first carry. Well, wasn't able to break a tackle there. And uh, trust us when we tell you, Daniel Bolden knows that you got to go low and be secure like he just did to exactly. get Stewart in the ground, right? Yeah, from second team, all Mac preseason poll. Bolden is one of those guys who understands the mission. That is, if you're going to tackle Stewart, you have to bring your full body and soul to get the job done. Terion Stewart uh, off the football field after being knocked to the ground by Daniel Bolden. Bazelak will fire that quick in, and that was hauled in as he drilled that throw to Malcolm Johnson Jr. 
Johnson, the 200-pound senior, transferred from Auburn to the Bowling Green Mid-American Conference program. Yeah, showing some hands right there that he got hit, but he managed to hold on to the football on that slant route. You know, he had an ankle injury last week, too, against Kent State. And, uh, you know, but Scott Leffler just raved about this young man to us this week. In terms of what he brings to this program. Back to the ground game and almost breaking that tackle uh, into Toledo territory. On that carry for a Bowling Green is uh, Jason Patterson. Well, Patterson, big, sturdy running back to Rod, too. 225 pounds. Right, standing at six feet. And he was a huge stream tackle away from continuing to run the football. So many weapons on this Bowling Green offensive unit from a skill position player standpoint. You think Scott Lefter didn't uh, emphasize run the football today? Their highest rushing total before today, 121 yards. Just starting the third quarter, now 126 yards for Bowling Green on the ground. Make it more near 130 yards now as uh, lowering the pads and getting a few again for Bowling Green, Jason Patterson. And it is interesting how the slow of the pace starting off the second half for Coach Leffler in that it was much more up-tempo in the first half, but they've seen to slow things down and want to go a more methodical route as opposed to the big play. Stay on the ground on third and two, partner. You got the backs for it. Yeah. Let's see what Scott Leffler's play call is. Stay on the ground indeed. First down again. That's been real good to him today. Out of that RPO game, Bazelak put it in the stomach, pull it out of the running back, first down. Yeah, and to add to that, once he sees that defensive end run down the line of scrimmage as opposed to keeping containment, what is Bazelak's read? To go outside with the football. How about this old line, huh? Led by Alex Padgett, the 330-pound junior from Avon Lake High School here in Ohio. He makes all the calls, runs the offense for this offensive line. Bazelak will play fake. He got hit from behind. Got his throw off on the outstretched hands of Malcolm Johnson. See, I would ask Gerard Cherry, uh, does he need to pull that in? But, you know, Gerard, of course, made his living as not wanting to see receivers catch the football. Yeah, well, at the end of the day, Michael, it's an overthrown ball. You have your receiver in Johnson Jr. wide open as he beats Smith on the play. And for Bays, like he had to hurry that because he was under duress. And that's the beauty of having pressure in that it makes a quarterback not throw an accurate pass. And that's exactly what happened right there. So, luckily for Avery Smith and the rest of that Toledo Rocket defense, they avoided a big potential touchdown play. The all-world receiver, Harold Fannin, who wears number zero, three catches for 31 yards. Bazelak going to go the other way. There was pressure there coming. That throw was intended for Malcolm Johnson, but how about Avery Smith on that, uh, that very tight coverage on the quick out? Very much so. And had that been a deeper route, say, seven to nine-yard mark, we're probably seeing Avery Smith, if he catches the football, going to the house for his own version of a pick six. Toledo has certainly come out to play the second half. It did not look this way in the first half when that Bowling Green was doing anything and everything that they wanted to do on the offensive side for getting productive plays. But right now, they're having a bit of a long struggle, if you will. From behind, quarterback Connor Bazelak. Harold Fennin is in the, the slot on the scene to the left. Bazelak in trouble. Sack time, Toledo. Coming up to make that rocket hit, DeAndre Reagan. Reagan out of Opalaka, Florida, but he burst through there. I don't know if he was touched. <laughs> he was touched, but he was not slowed down. That's the key part of it all. And where was this defensive line production in the first half of this football game for Toledo? But they will certainly take it right now, because right now they are dominated in trenches. Are you think maybe defensive coordinator Vince Karras uh, maybe had some inspiring and yet choice words for his defensive unit at halftime? The optimal word is choice. They gave up 28 points in the first half. I don't pick six, yes, but uh, one of that's very unlike the Toledo Rocket defense. Now booming that away and hanging it high. The punter, John Henderson, 
Fair caught. Fair caught at the seven yard line. So not optimum field position for the Toledo Rockets who trail it by eight here early in the third. Right. And you're thinking here with Toledo Rockets as they enter the football field on the offensive side of the ball. Can you establish the run? Can you get something going with the running game? Because it was very pedestrian in the first half. And I believe you're going to need to operate with your running game as well as your passing game to complement each other, get the job done, and score some points in the second half against Bowling Green. Again, 58 yards total rushing for Toledo in the opening half against Bowling Green. They average 115 on the ground per game. And again, it's the backup running back to start this third quarter. Connor Wallenzak, 210 pounds, sophomore from nearby Perrysburg, Ohio, here in the glass around the glass city. Well, one thing's definite is that neither one of these teams on the offensive side of the ball want to have negative play on first down. Mm -hmm. Very you're, conservative. You're right. Give Wallenzak three, second and seven. That quick throw. Outside the numbers hauled in once again by Jawan Newton. But Tucker Gleason again, uh, Gerard, just a quick couple of steps, right? And getting the football out of his hands. Yeah, this is personifying take what the defense gives you. Because if they're going to play 20 yards off you, just throw a quick out and pick up positive yards for a first down. Exactly what Gleason did. Moving the sticks, 25 yard line. Now Gleason again. Wallenzak pulling guards gave him a little bit of room. Both Carter Foudy and Ethan Spoth, left guard, right guard, they got out in front. They both pulled and they cleared a little space for Wallenzak. Right. It's not pretty, but it's effective what we're seeing out of Wallenzak and that he's being patient as a runner, saying, okay, there's nothing there. Let me dip outside and see if I can pick up more positive yards. Got seven, second and three. Wallenzak moved the sticks as he powered his way to the 36 yard line. First down Toledo. So right now, it's all backup running back Connor Wallenzak after we only saw Jacquez Stewart for a couple of snaps in the first half. He's Toledo, Toledo's uh, top running back. Yeah, along with that being the top running back right now, what we're seeing though, Michael, is much more push. From this offensive unit, in particular the line for Toledo. Partner, we say that, and Jacquez Stewart in the football game right now. At the running back spot to the left of Gleason. Play fake. And got what they wanted there. It is caught. Jawan Newton. See you later. Touchdown, Toledo. And even with a delay with the pass, it was the defensive back had an opportunity to make a play. Juwan Newton shows you why he's one of the best in the business. And now he finds himself being the all-time touchdown leader for the Toledo Rockets. And that was such a timely and needed play on his part. And the question now is, do they go for a two-point conversion to try to tie this thing up, Michael? That's a big-time hit off that quick play fake. And well, Tucker Gleason laid the football beautifully. To Jawan Newton, the 64-yard touchdown catch. Double digits now on the year for Jawan Newton. Ten touchdown grabs, and uh, we just said all-time number all one time. in the history of the Toledo Rockets. Jason Candle says, stay on the football field offense, going for two. Gleason overshot. He overshot Junior Vandeross. He had him on uh, as Vandeross hit the goal line and looked for the football. Media timeout. So Toledo tried to tie it on the two point conversion. But, however, five plays, 93 yards, and two minutes and three seconds to the house, says Jawan Newton. 28 26, Bully Green. You're in a hole. It's about the ch what hits my <laughs> <laughs> thousand plus. You gotta see <laughs> with the enemy once in a while, huh? <laughs> Midnight blue and gold and the orange and brown, Toledo and bowling green. How about Jawan Newton? Wow, what an afternoon. Yeah, you expect nothing less from this type of uh, talent. Seven grabs, a buck 55, and a couple of touchdowns. And now he has surpassed Cody Thompson.
as the all-time touchdown leading receiver in Toledo Rocket history. Yeah, that gets the sense, Michael, that this will not be the last time that we feature or highlight what he's going to do in the course of this football game. I hear you, partner, and I couldn't agree more. Now, let's see the response for the Bowling Green offense again that put four touchdowns up in the opening half. Solid return for the Falcons as uh, they get out near the 30-yard line. And that Bowling Green return again came from uh, Jackson Patterson. So here's a good look. Starting quarterback Connor Bazelak, the young man from Dayton, Ohio, southwest part of the Buckeye State, started his career at Missouri, then went to Indiana, and then head coach Scott Leffler says, uh, let me the starting quarterback if you joined us as a Bowling Green Falcon. That appealed to Bazelak, and here he is. Off play action. He's going to take a shot. It is caught. What a throw. An outstanding grab by Rakeem Smith. Hey, good. Talking about Bazelak showed us why Scott Leffler wanted him to run his offense. What a throw and catch. Yeah, look at the extension of part of Rakeem Smith and that he goes completely full extension to pull that football in because he's wide open and he makes a circus catch and extends his body and comes down with it. A very timely shot play on the part of Bazelak and company for this Bowling Green offense. Rakeem Smith says, Baltimore in the house. The young man from Calvert Hall High School. Back to the ground game. Looks still alive for Bowling Green. Did they... They got the football to Harold Fannin. <laughs> That's a tight end, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, they got the back. football to Fannin. <laughs> the man can do so many things, and he does it exceptionally well. Yes, this is a design running play for Fannin Jr. He is a tight end by trade, but he can play running back on any other given occasion if you give him the football. Second carry today for Harold Fannin. 12 yards on the two carries. Got eight there, second and two. Baselack, play fake. Look at that zone. It was broken up. Oh, how about the defensive play to break that up for Toledo as Avery Smith just saved a touchdown. Partner, you know, it's all positive, but Baselack's got to put more air under that, and he's got six. Exactly. You locked it up there. That's what's going to happen. The DB gets a chance, and Avery Smith to come back and cut underneath it to break that play up. But that was a sensational play on his part, because that certainly was a touchdown in the making. If you throw more air under it, it'll put more heat on it so that the defender cannot get on that play. That's the 10th pass breakup of the year. He has one pick. He just saved a touchdown there. Baselack will check down. And that throw is hauled in. Yeah. As Bazelak. Got a bunch of choices on this play right here, Michael. We got a hold in. A lot of flags, huh? Pass interference. Yeah, the play from Rakeem Smith, who made the grab on the Bazelak throw. Let's see if it is going to stand up. It will. It's against, it should be on Toledo based upon what we just saw. Mm -hmm. Matt Pakowski. White hat game referee today in conversation with uh, three of his officiating mates. There is no foul on the play. Result is a first down. Well, that's one of those deals where, like, it was a positive play anyway, so let's take it off the board. But what took place was in the secondary, you had a situation where the defender pretty much undressed the receiver for Bowling Green. Well, Bowling Green now with Fannin crossing the formation in motion. Going to go outside the uh, seams on the left side of the formation. They're coming back with that slip screen, and Toledo had it smelled out. Outstanding play from Jackson Barrow, the Mike linebacker out of Indianapolis who made that hit. It's called getting accustomed to and getting used to plays being made. And right there, you see Barrow do a great job of diagnosing, sniffing it out, and making a play. Now, in the first half, Michael, that was going for 10, 15, 20 yards. But it seems to me that Toledo is starting to get a sense of what Bowling Green wants to do on the offensive side of the ball with their misdirection plays. Barrow certainly did there as uh, Jamal Johnson 
And the misdirection uh, did not compute there. Play fake baseline. Jamal Johnson dropped the football. Ooh. That's an incomplete pass. And right now what I'm seeing, Michael, is that first half was great. Those players were clicking. But right now you're in a situation where Bowling Green where they're just simply not executing to the same level, which was extremely high that they did in the first half. And you're going to have to weather the storm because you have a, a Toledo offense that's ready to get back on the football field and do some damage. Yeah. Bowling Green holding on now to a precarious two-point lead at 28-26. The Falcons are four of seven on their third down conversions. This is a long one. Third and 15 for Bazelak. That quick throw, he put it in the hands of Jacob Harris, but Harris not going to get in the operating room at all and got thrown to the ground. So Toledo getting their stop. Field goal time now for Scott Leffler as he's going to get Zach Long on. Zach Long, I don't know if he considers this long. It'll be 47 yards from the right hash. Yeah, he certainly is out there for a reason to get the job done. An interesting play call. We'll certainly talk more about it after this field goal attempt. Zach Long from 47 yards away out of the hole to Travis Keener. He got a lot of leg. Got the proper accuracy. Got the proper Zach, name. Yeah, Zach Long. 47 yards out. He buries that. They'll put three on the board. Bowling Green bunces their lead up to five when we come back. Let's hide in the attic. You switched to. Love, homie. I get a free. and made your river that runs through the uh, city of Toledo what a Saturday afternoon for college football today huh for 30,000 on hand and this Bowling Green Falcon football team their head coach Scott Leffler they have uh, bumped the lead back up to five again at uh, 31 26 Jason Candle Toledo's ninth year head coach going to get his offense back in the football field. Gerard Cherry and uh, it's that first field goal for uh, Bowling Green here after the four first half touchdowns. And uh, Toledo has had probably for Jason Candle's liking too many drives uh, short circuited uh, before getting in the end zone, having a good field goal team out. Another non-returnable off the uh, the right leg of Bowling Green's kickoff man Zach Long. All right, so this Toledo offense. Here's the offensive line. All right, from left to right, Allen Jones at left tackle, Carter Foudy the left guard, Jacob James the Ohio State transfer at center, Ethan Spot the right guard, and uh, Cole Rett. How would you typify their day today? in terms of not overall and being able to run the football. Well, it started off slow, but to their credit in the second half, they have started to control the trenches and are getting a good push and picking up positive yards with that running attack. Our quarterback Tucker Gleason motion from Vanderos. Pressure. Gleason will step up. Real nice grab made by uh, Jawan Newton. Depending on the spot, yeah, they got 10. Move the sticks, first down, Toledo. He makes it look easy. That's Jawan Newton, because right there, you have a defender on your back draped on you, and you still come out with the football with no juggle of the catch. NFL scouts love him, folks. You'll see him playing on Sundays. Ground game means Savon Clark on the carry. Big back, if you're just joining us. Transfer from the Georgia Bulldogs is Savon Clark. 230-pound running back. Yeah, one of the few times in the second half you saw a negative first down play for this Toledo Rocket offense. Saw a lot of it in the first half. So no game there on second and ten. Gleason going to take a shot. Contact flags. That's going to go as a P.I. on the, the Bowling Green secondary as it was C.J. Brown, the guilty party. Pass interference, Bowling Green. And CJ, you have to keep your cool, my man. You bail Torres out. He was not catching his football, Michael. It was well overthrown. If you attack him, attack him. This is what they're going to do. They're going to call pass interference.
interference. Personal foul. Rough in the passer. Very good assessment on your part, partner. That was uh, that was overthrown and going to be incomplete without the contact. Right. And add on to that a personal foul penalty against Bowling Green. So right now for Coach Leffler, he may want to call a timeout or get his guys together and say, hey, we cannot self-destruct. We have to keep our composure because we're starting to see a little bit of a meltdown on both the offensive and defensive sides of the ball for Bowling Green. Yeah, such a large part of the uh, what a head coach and, and you know, assistant coaches too got to deal with with their units. Everybody's got to keep composure. Stay refined. Flags kill you. Both sides of the ball. Kind of Wallenzak on the uh, Toledo carry. Wallenzak in the sophomore. Most of the uh, the heavy lifting today as the Toledo running back with Jacquez Stewart, their top running back and one of the best in college football. Just not getting a lot of playing time today. We've seen him in a few snaps is all. Now gonna run that uh, that quick reverse. But look at the play defensively from Jordan Oladokun. Oladokun who wears, uh, let's check that. Let's check that. Yeah, with Rambo right That there. was Rambo, yeah. Where's number four? The four and the one. Kind of getting bunched up there. This is what you call playing the boundary and making a great open field tackle on part of Rambo. Excellent play. Third and long now on third and eight. Gleason. Crossing route. It is caught underneath, but uh, upended and taken a big hit was Eric Holly as Holly got uh, got up to upended again. Darius McClendon, hard hitting senior nickel on that Bowling Green stop. The Bowling Green defense, it's like they're going to force a punt. And that's exactly what they needed. They're going to maintain their five point lead. Justin Pegues back standing at his eight yard line. The junior kickoff and punt return man. Now that football's going to kick back and come up field on Toledo's punt cover team. All right, Bowling Green with the football again. Don't go anywhere. Bowling Green leads Toledo by. You have done. Invited for year. Gacko stop. Fair and fast. And this is Celia. Jalapenos and it. Customers paid for their test. Design with leading. Hundred percent of grease. Back at the campus, the University of Toledo here in Toledo, Ohio. Great to have you along on ESPN today. Michael Rega, my partner Gerard Cherry, our producer Stas Hall, uh, director Anthony Giassi. Great crew. Know you're enjoying it. Big rivalry. Scott Leffler, the head coach of the Bowling Green Falcons. Going to look at his football team now. They have, this is their worst starting field position of the day today, but they started this football game with the lead and have held it all the way through. Misdirection on that handoff from quarterback uh, Connor Bazelak as he got the football to Jamal Johnson. Johnson started that that motion in one direction and misdirected it. Right, and the great play design again, and that you're selling the idea there's going to be a jet sweep, but ultimately he's going to cut it back up and turn up the field for positive yards. They've seen this play before, so they need to diagnose it better for the Toledo Rockets defense. No game there on well, the Toledo defense. They got gashed a little bit in that first half. Again, gonna run that jet action. That's a first down for Bowling Green. They got the football in the hands of Raheem Smith. Smith has done, uh, you know, he's done it all. Yeah, he has, and he's doing a lot of damage on those jet plays that get him to the uh, the wide side of the football field. Yeah, and the beauty of it is that they saw the jet sweep the last play prior to that, and then they come back and actually run the jet sweep. So as a defender, you're saying, what are they doing? And that's what you want. You don't want to have indecision on the part of a defense. What well, is diamond formation with the two running backs uh -huh. and uh, the one now getting out of it? Uh, 
for Bazelak. Bazelak will throw the out. Ooh. Well, that's hauled in. That's an outstanding grab by Malcolm Johnson. He ran that terrific route, Gerard Cherry, and Bazelak put it on him, didn't he? That was some pro-level stuff right here. And the reason why I say that, folks, now the fake was not great, but the throw was excellent And that he's out of his break, and there's the ball right there for his receiver, Johnson, to catch it. Hitting the throw was Connor Bazelak as he and Malcolm Johnson hooked up for 14 yards there. Bazelak now going to take a shot for Johnson again, and that's going to be a flag, and it's going to be either a legal contact or a P.I. on Toledo's corner, Avery Smith. Pass interference. Defense, number 12. 15-yard penalty for the previous spot. Down. Yeah, I'm with Avery on this one. You're both fighting each other down the football field. Why is... And I get it. He's trying to fight back for the ball, but you both have your hands on each other. I'm going to let that one slide. And yes, I am biased because I was a former defensive guy. <laughs> I, I didn't say anything, but didn't say anything. On that, I, I tend to agree with you. You might be surprised, Dale. I intend to agree with you that I, I don't know. I don't know if, yeah, uh, you know, that that's way. a legitimate P.I. there on Smith. Be that all as it may from the 27-yard line. Quick toss. Oh, Toledo has got that under control again. Oh, the Rockets defensively been doing a solid job on that. As uh, once again, Lance Dixon. Yes. How many times we called Dixon coming up from that linebacking level to make a stop for loss behind the line of scrimmage? I know for... In fact, that's the second time today he's done just that against the same running back, that being Terion Stewart, who was extremely difficult to tackle. But to Dixon's credit, he's getting the job done. Saw a good look at Vince Karras, the outstanding defensive coordinator there. Second and long, second and 15. Bazelak off that play fake while he gunned that throw. Harold Fennin made the grab before he got pushed out of bounds. And not quite a first down, Harold. But we understand your enthusiasm on making that grab on second and 15. Uh, got 13 to bring up third and short. Yeah, Max and Hook, that's terrific safety for Toledo is up in arms because he felt he was pushed off. You're not going to get that call against the best tight end in the nation. That's in the third quarter. Both football teams, as is custom, got the four fingers raised as the third quarter comes to an end. Hang on. Don't go anywhere. We told you when this started, we might come down to the final possession. Has all the designs of just that. Bowling Green's got a five-point lead when we come back. The closer leaves. It's fair and really have fair. Uh -huh. Is the pimento? Give me a vodka. Names in the game. And yeah, no. Eat. Forty-five minutes in the books. There you see it. Bowling Green got off to the solid start, and the Levin Falcon offense off that quick play action. The throw is dropped. He put it on Jamal Johnson. Johnson started to turn and wanted to get to the end zone before he secured the football. And I'm starting to see more and more of lack of execution on the part of Bowling Green because that was an open play and a well-designed play. But if you execute, you're going to find yourself doing a great job. And look at the passing yards. Toledo, you wouldn't think with the score being it is that they lead in that category. But to their credit, they're doing just that and keeping themselves in this football game. And Coach Leffler is telling them, you got to catch it before you think about running. Bowling Green. We'll try to bump this lead up to eight, which of course would still keep it a one possession game. 35 yard attempt from the right hash for Zach Long. This from 35 yards out for Long. Lot of leg. Accuracy is fine. Put those three on the board for the Bowling Green Falcons. Eight point game when we get back. My D. Thank you. I use this less. Run your market games. 
There are your two main characters in the football theatrics today, Gerard Cherry. Connor Bazelak and Tucker Gleason, the quarterbacks. Your assessment? Yeah, well, both have done a good job of hitting multiple receivers and being effective in the passing game, and you would think that Bazelak would have more yards under his belt. But simply put, he's been operating on a short field. But what you do appreciate about both these guys is that they're effectively showing that they have the ability to run the football, but most importantly, pass vertically as well to put their teams in a position where you're having a high scoring affair. There they are. Bazelak will go to the uh, the headphones to talk to uh, the offensive coaches. How close? I mean, is this? I think we told you earlier on. You know, this, this is the. Uh, this is the 90th meeting between these football teams. Toledo with a two game edge. 43 wins for Toledo, 41 for Bowling Green. There have been four ties, but oh, yeah, though, the Rockets have won 12 in the last 14. Now the short kickoff hanging up high and pulled down by the Toledo Rockets. And they're going to have good field position as uh, they will uh, start from their 35 yard line. Put your one Newton on the receiving end of that uh, that uh, hung high short kickoff. Took a pretty good shot, didn't he? Took a heck of a shot. And again, Juwan Newton is not the biggest of guys. 5'11, 192 pounds. And he pretty much got blasted on that play. And you don't want to see such a prolific player for the Toledo Rockets be on the football field on the ground right now. So you wonder why he was out there in the first place. Hey, you looking for a playmaker, and he certainly is that. But we hope he does get up because he's so pivotal to this Toledo Rockets aerial attack. Yeah, no question. Gerard Cherry, uh, in the fourth quarter that just began, only 12 seconds in with him. What elements, what components in this uh, uh, game that uh, shows Bowling Green on top by eight are of... Uh, of the greatest uh, keys for both squads here. Well, for Bowling Green is simple. You're going to have to reestablish what you did on the defensive side of the ball in the first half, and that you were getting great penetration. You were putting them under pressure, but since the start of the second half, what has it been? It's been more about what the Rockets have been able to do as far as driving up and down the football field. They have taken control of the trenches, and as we know, in most cases, if you start winning the trenches, generally speaking, you start to win football games. They'll start until the Rockets from their 35 yard line with quarterback Tucker Gleason leading the offense on the football field for Jason Kendall. Well, a year ago, it was a, a 1.3231 win for Toledo at Bowling Green last year. They've got work to do in the fourth quarter to back up last year's win at Doyd Perry with this one at home. Wallen Zach. On that first down carry, how about the uh, Bowling Green defensive line today? As uh, you get a good look at the Falcons, Anthony Hawkins, the big man in the middle. That quick throw, put it in the hands of wide receiver Junior Vandeross. This is going to bring up third down. What is? How do we assess this Bowling Green defensive line today? As we said, led by the big man in the middle, Anthony Hawkins. At times, very dominant, and then at times, dormant. And what you're seeing right now is that they're starting to pick it up again. But what I like there, Michael, is that they were all swarming to the football to prevent Van der Ross from picking up that first down. All right, this is third down and short. We'll call it a short two here. Wallenzak, ground game, first down and more. Lowered the pads into Bowling Green territory at the 49-yard line on third and short. Wallenzak picked up seven. Yeah, Wallenzak is not going to make it look sexy, but what he does make it look as effective and that he runs to daylight. He finds hole, he hits hole. Very effective running back. Very. And he's your run. And he's just, and he doesn't, you have to worry about him fumbling the ball. Coach Campbell told us. That's right. He trusts him with the football in his hands. Yeah, without question. Gleason will put it up. Oh, again. He just got picked off. I think the communication between quarterback Gleason and Jaden Dotton was not in sync. Interception, Bowling Greens, Jordan Oladokun. What a day he's had. That's two INTs. It looks like Bowling Green is back to their winning ways when it comes to creating turnovers. But once again, the coaching point is 
You cannot stare down the receiver. You never move the defensive back off his target. Look, right there, I'm looking at where I'm going. And on top of that is an inaccurate pass. Of, along with staring down the receiver, you just can't do those things for Tucker Gleason. You have to put the defender off. And that may cost you the ball game. He did not look Jordan Oladokun off. And now Gleason has turned the football over via the pick interception for the second time today ground game terry on stewart give him two before he got knocked to the ground and give coach kendall credit for not losing his cool in the process because there's a lot of football left to be played but for tucker it's really simple don't stare down the receiver. It makes the job too easy from a defensive back standpoint of what's going to happen and what I need to do to make a play on the ball. But also need to be on the same page with your receiver as well. How about the head coach in that uh, that offensive grouping there on the sidelines, and he was doing all the talking as well. Second and eight now for Bowling Green after they came up with a turnover. That throw is going to sail out of bounds as Trying to hit that uh, that deep sideline throw for the Falcons was corner quarterback Connor Bazelak. Nasir Bowers was all over that, Michael. Yeah. Yeah, Raheem Smith had an excellent grab earlier in the second half. But right there is how you play the fade route, and that you want to push that receiver towards the boundary, giving him no space to operate to make a circus catch. 29,697. One of the largest crowds in the Glass Bowl Stadium history. They're loving this today. It's the largest crowd here at the Fable Glass Bowl in eight years since 2016. And oh, are they seeing a good one? This is third and eight. Bazelak stepping up, delivers his throw. That's hold in. First down bowling green. Malcolm Johnson worked his route and got free in the secondary beyond the sticks. And the composure that he's shown in the pocket on the part of Connor Bazelak is incredible. He's getting some pressure, but he doesn't panic. He steps up into the pocket and delivers a strike to Malcolm Johnson Jr., who catches that football and gives you that first down for bowling green. Scott Leffler. Hit that third down throw from his corner quarterback, Connor Bazelak, to Malcolm Johnson. Moves the sticks from the 41 yard line. This is Terry on Stewart, and just nothing there for Stewart. Oh, this Bowling Green defense, especially against the run, has really started to rise up. How many times have we called either Jackson Barrow or Lance Dickin Dixon making those hits? Right, both those guys have gotten much more accustomed to how you tackle in the open field. One, Terrion Stewart, because he's an extremely tough runner to bring down, but they're making it look easy. We're going to come inside the 11-minute mark here in the fourth quarter. We expected it to be this way, a 60-minute football game before it was decided. It's pretty much what we have. Second and 12, stay with the ground game. Stewart trying to break tackles. Stewart to the 38-yard line. This is going to bring up third down and seven for Bowling Green. Yeah, do you go misdirection here, Michael, or do you go with the bread and butter and hit number zero, that being one, Harold Fan Jr. Isolate him on the defensive back, and you should like your chances. But he won't be matched up one against one of my favorite. Well, actually, Alls is not going to go on Fan Jr., but you're going to have a cornerback matched up against a tight end, so look for them to isolate. Toledo fans trying to extol their defense to get this third down stop. It's Bowling Green that uses their first timeout Time here Bowling in the Green. second half. That's the first of the half. 34 26, Bowling Green by eight. Vince Karras and his defense trying to get a stop. If you want, is that active spicy full? There's no place. Enjoy. They got, a, they got a lot of coordinating to do, buddy. This is a pivotal part of the game, right? I know yeah. it's 10 minutes left, but this third down is crucial. 
to the outcome of this game. And if you're Vince, you're saying something, okay, what have they been doing to us all day? Well, we've seen a lot of misdirection, and you anticipate that's going to be a part Vince of it. Harris, left of your screen. Left of your screen. Me and Max Warren, play Bowling Green OC. But the thing you have to tell your defense is play our sound coverage. And believe me when I tell you that the first thing you see more than likely will not be what's taking place. So if something's in front of you, there's more than likely something behind you. By third down and eight, Harold Fennin, the all-world uh, receiver, is in the tight end spot right down there, left of the formation, bottom of the screen. They'll cross the formation with motion from Rakeem Smith. Pressure, Bayslax throw, incomplete. It was too tall intended for Rakeem Smith. Excellent coverage again out of that Toledo secondary from Nasir Bowers. Yeah, very interesting call in that for Fannin Jr. We talk so much about how important your PC is, but they sent him on basically a seam route play and took him out of the play and give Toledo Rockets defensive front credit because what did they do? They got Bayslack off the spot. That's so key to having success against a very accurate throwing quarterback. Keep an eye on that man right there that wears number 21 in blue on his uh, gold home jersey. That's a ball. That's a Toledo kick returner. Bryson Hammer. Bryson Hammer. He is uh, one of the best. Only, oh, that was dangerous. Mostly don't see that from Bryson Hammer. He fair caught that at the six yard line. Decided better to secure a fair catch than to maybe let that football get inside the five. Yeah, what Bryson does from a technique standpoint is you always want your body square, and he was slightly turned, but to his credit, he has sure hands. He got the job done, but that could have been horrific had he fumbled that football. Well, Bowling Green has effectively, without putting points on the board, I mean, the next thing you want is change and turnover field position. They've done that. Flip the field as part of the whole process. Now you have a field position game taking place. What does Tucker Gleason in this offense have? 94 yards away from Pater. Well, that first down carry. Notice how now late stages inside 10 minutes left. You can hear the pads really popping up here as Connor Wallenzak got knocked down after a two-yard game. I was waiting for that way got crisp out of night. You hear the pads clacking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yes, indeed. Wallenzak got two. Wallenzak, as he's done for the majority of this one, the Toledo running back. They're going to run that uh, misdirect mm. now, and Bowling Green had none of it. Bowling Green all over that, making that hit again for the Falcons. With Joseph Sip Jr. coming up against that that quick toss to Jawan Newton. Not enough real estate to run that play, in my opinion, Michael. Why not run that to the field as opposed to the boundary and allow your receiver Newton, who's very excellent with running the football in his hands, to have more room to work with. This is a huge snap here for both football teams. Toledo needs a conversion on third and ten. Leeson's throw. Mm. He had that conversion there, but he overthrew Anthony Torres, the tight end. Bowling Green gets a stop, and if they just catch this punt, they're going to get outstanding field position with an eight-point lead under nine minutes left. And the blitz did what the blitz is supposed to do. What is that? That is putting the quarterback in pressure mode and not delivering an accurate pass. See right here, Gleason just simply put, feels the pressure and rushes the throw. What kind of punt will Emilio Duran get off here? A couple yards deep in the end zone. Oh, he hit a real good one. It'll back up Bowling Green on that uh, that return. They went to Justin Pegues there, and Bowling Green will start from their 38-yard line. When we come back, on the green by media timeout. Everyone's watching. We're spicy for jalapeno pepper. Everything we. Stadium Bowling Green with a 34-26 lead on Toledo. Not quite yet halfway through 
Uh, this fourth and final quarter, Michael Regai, Gerard Cherry, our producer Spouse Hall, director Anthony Giassi, all of our terrific crew doing yeoman work today. But well, Bully Green has led this one uh, virtually from stem to stern. Gerard, and they've got the football again. Trying to bump this lead over a possession. Terrific start. Guess who? As quarterback Connor Bazelak, he got a favorable look at the old world tight end Harold Fenning Jr. and hit him to move the sticks first down. Bowling Green. Play action pass. Every linebacker in the building reacts to it, leaving what? The middle wide open for Harold Fenning Jr. to operate and pick up positive yards. Harold Fanning got 18 more today. Now for Fanning on the afternoon. That is a catch a number six for Fanning today. And he's accumulated 63 yards. Oh, the beauty of having a running and passing attack working well together. Starting, got a little bit quiet here on the Toledo side of things. Back to the ground game, and that's Terry on Stewart. Maybe got one. Stewart, who started the day with a 25 yard run and kind of uh, set the scene for Bowling Green offensively. Again, the Falcons, four first half touchdowns for Scott Leffler. They've been leading pretty much the entire way. Right. And if you're the Toledo defense right now, Michael. Your offense is having troubles moving the football. You got to start saying to yourself, how do we create a turnover? There's that diamond formation for quarterback Connor Bazelak. Stewart got through that slight crease. Stewart with a cut inside the 25 yard line. First down again. Uh, Terry on Stewart just basically tells every defense he plays, I'm not going down I refuse on first to go hit. Down. Might not go down on second hit. You better bring multiples to get me on the ground. And that's on full display right here as he breaks through that defensive front and another sheer tackler in the balls ultimately gets him down. But he's such a tough guy to tackle, Michael, because one, you have a hard time pinpointing where he's at in the first place because he's short in his stature. But when he's in that open field, you know where he's at because he runs so hard. And that a great look inside that helmet face mask of Terry on Stewart. Bowling Green has eight rushes today for 10 yards or better. Stewart again. Look at Terry on Stewart. He turned a one yard gain into a five yard carry, Gerard Cherry. And that's what you call wanting it. And in this case, wanted more than the guys want to bring him down because he should be tackled in the backfield. But no, he's such a hard guy to want to get and locate. But when he meets you in the hole, you have to do a much better job than that if you barrel and bringing him down. We'll show you here momentarily. But as we came on uh, the air this afternoon, this one, this one going to go a long way potentially in ultimately deciding who are the haves and. Maybe who still has a lot of work to do for talking about winning a MAC championship this year. And it's going to be Bowling Green. Quarterback Connor Bazelak calling the timeout. And it's Scott Leffler has, and no surprise, he's rode Terry on Stewart today. We promised you we take a look at the Mid American Conference today. Let's do it. Oh, Tim Albin and his Ohio Bobcats just rolled Buffalo down at Peden Stadium in Athens. Miami blasted Central Michigan today. How about Akron? Fourth quarter lead for Joe Moorhead over Eastern Michigan in the fourth quarter. Ball State, Northern Illinois in a good one. And Western Michigan. Uh, the uh, the Broncos, they, they, they are rolling, aren't they? Yes, got a chance to watch them up. last week. That's right. Very impressive. That's Similar to right. what you have here with Bowling Green. They have playmakers at every position on the offensive side of the ball. No, oh, you're right. You are right, partner. This is second down and six. Turning that corner inside the 10 yard line. Oh. Still alive. Battling toward the pylon. He's in the end zone. Touchdown, Raheem Smith. What a tough, tough run for six 
from the 175 pound junior out of Baltimore. Five foot nine. He took something from the page of Terry Young Stewart and said that we may be undersized in our height, but we run with a lot of heart and conviction. And you won't see a better run today than what you saw right there. Because once again, Michael, he should have been tackled in the backfield. But what did he do? He got on that outside corner and refused to go down and muscles his way. Yes, I said muscles his way into the end zone for the touchdown. Very impressive run. Well, that's, a, that's a buck 75 now. That's not a 230 pound back. I mean, and, and that was just will and that and desire, right? might be a misnomer. Might be 165. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. Well, you're, you're absolutely right. That is all about will and desire and wanting more. And this is why we talk about the importance of complimentary football because you get the great blocking right there, but the effort right here pushes a guy off of him, purposely runs into a defender, and says, I want what we call that smoke, and it ultimately finds himself in the end zone for the touchdown. And now Toledo fans are starting to vacate the building, but you have to be impressed with this effort. And look at Fanning Jr. right there, helping in on the play by pulling his receiver, Raheem Smith, into the end zone. Another look at it. Again, nice outside, no one that'll contain. All right, I'm going to a defender, but I'm going to keep my feet because I want to be in the end zone and score as well. Great job of running the football. And great play call to get on the part of Leffler and company. All the green is now over. 200 yards running the football today against the Toledo defense ranked at the very top of the Mid-American Conference and in the top 30 nationally against the run. Yeah. This is important, Michael. You are now up 41 to 26 on your right. Yeah. At their home. Well, now we're talking about there's more than two possession lead. It's a two touchdown lead. Oh, yeah, those are wearing the orange and brown that have made this trek. And it's only 13 miles difference between these two campuses in northwest Ohio. But Falcon fans feeling real, real good. Toledo's got to get it quick. It'll start with a Jerwan Newton kickoff return. Good field position. The issue for Toledo has simply been that they cannot get a chunk play going they had some success early on in the game but since the second half is taking place I really haven't seen anything deep take place you need to go back to that aerial attack and Tucker has to not stare at the receivers in the process would you kind of call this a star crossed up and down afternoon for Tucker Gleason yes it's certainly been that he's had his moments of excellency and he's had his moments of dare I say despair just not making the throws he wanted to make he's been picked off a couple of times and missed a couple open receivers and mm. that his accuracy Gerard when a quarterback consistently is missing high does that depict or tell you anything yeah it tells me a couple of things one of his feet from a mechanic standpoint aren't set and then he's feeling the pressure in the heat of the pass rush Jason Campbell 504 left with his football team down 15 it's going to be third down now and 10 if Toledo wants to uh, keep this drive alive or quite possibly maybe uh, with five minutes left and now possessions going to be shortened maybe if they don't pick it up on this third down snap maybe that man Jason Candle says offense we got to stay on the football field. Yeah, can't get the ball back over to Bowling Green they're doing way too well on the offensive side of the ball for you think you're going to slow them back. Five of twelve on third down set up that screen it's going to be for negative yardage. Oh again these Bowling Green linebackers run into the football they got all over Jacquez Stewart there making that hit for Bowling Green Trent Sims. How many times have we called Joe Sip, Brock Horn today, this BG linebacking core that has been outstanding? Yeah, plenty of times. And right here, they have a very interesting assignment ahead of them. Do not let them catch anything behind the sticks as your assignment. Probably your football game right here, folks. Fourth of 13. Gleason, got to throw the football. Yeah. He's not going to throw the football. Turnover on downs. Give it back to the uh, Bowling Green Falcons as Gleason decided to uh, pull the football down and try to make it with his legs. Came up short. Bowling Green 
Well, their fans feeling real good about a 15 point lead and the football with 4.23 to go. Yeah, they have all the rights to be excited and hyped because their football team is dominating at this point. And for Gleason, you appreciate the effort. There was really nowhere to go with the football, so he did the right thing, but the indecisiveness to one to decide to run probably cost you being able to pick up that first down. Yeah, yep. So this is going to be a heavy dose now of Terrion Stewart and maybe Jamal Johnson. Got to believe that Bowling Green is going to continue to run the football. This is Stewart on the cutback. Stewart got five on that first down carry. And almost had more. He's been spotted at the 39. So we give Stewart four officially. 30 seconds time out. Second and six. And here is Jason Candle now. Saying we got to start using our timeouts. Yeah, the game tackle Stewart. If he's going to run like this hard, still strip that football from him. At least make an attempt for it. But you have to have everyone surround. You can't go one on one with him and try to do that because he'll bowl you over. But the idea of game tackling is something that has to be on your mind as a defense right now. Partner, I'm with you. We haven't seen a lot of that today from the Toledo D looking to rip the football off. Right. And the reason why you haven't seen a lot of that is that so many guys are caught up in what their assignment is with all the great job of misdirecting plays is forcing what? Reading as opposed to reacting on the defensive side of the ball for Toledo. 204 rush yards. Here's more from Terry on Stewart. Stewart just got five more and it's going to bring up third and short. We'll call it third and a long one. And now after the second down carry, Jason Candle deciding no timeout here on the third and two. And well, they're going to call it officially two. It's uh, I mean, really a long one. But be that as it may, you see the clock, which has now become very important as well. Right, certainly an issue. And when you're getting five yards a clip per run, or four to half to five, that doesn't help the cause either for Toledo to get off this football field and put their offense back on the field. And you know this is Terry on Stewart for the third consecutive time. He broke out of a couple of tackles. Going to depend on the spot. Probably going to be about a half yard short. Yeah. Timeout, Toledo. That's the second timeout. Jason Campbell has just used his second on four. Uh, the, Gerard, this is kind of no man's land. I mean, uh, if you're bowling green, I know you got a 15 point lead, but you're at the 35 yard line of Toledo, fourth and a long one. I don't think a field goal's in play here. That'd be 52 yards. You don't want to risk getting it blocked. What do you think about where, where, uh, uh, head coach Scott Leffler and his offensive staff are going to go here. Well, I'm going to put a fresh back in there and I'm going to run the football. That's what I'm going to do. And I'm also going to say to myself that, hey, they've had no success with passing the football for Toledo. So why am I fearful of them being back on the football field? All right, partner. Good call. That fresh back that you just mentioned, that's Jamal Johnson. At 200 pounds, Johnson, as you see, is offset to the right of quarterback Connor Bazelak. Now on motion. <laughs> Excellent design there. Yes, they went. Back to hey, oh, you, you, you get the main man involved, right? You get Harold Fannin involved? Yeah, we saw this earlier for a touchdown, Michael. So they decided to save it for what? A major fourth and one pickup so like I said all day today give props to this offensive coordination that's taken pl taken place for to for the Bowling Green Falcons today because it has been superb that may just about do it 11 yards on the ground for uh, the potential All-American Harold Fannin Jr. and the Bowling Green sideline feeling real good about this and why not Terry on Stewart on that carry and Jason Candle did he just burn his final timeout? Yes, he did. Timeout number three and uh, that will be uh, all allowed now for Jason Candle in Toledo and Bowling Green with this 15-point lead. They've come on the road 
Again, Toledo came back in the fourth quarter a year ago, down I-75 at Doyd Perry Stadium. Jason Candle's team came up with a fourth quarter win. This fourth quarter has been about Bowling Green flexing their muscle and saying, no, you're not even going to get the football back because we're going to run the football. Exactly. And when you have a back like Terry on Stewart, a.k.a. Bully, his hip-hop rapping name, Bully. which he's been just that, you're able to get the job done. And also, too, with the misdirection plays, you have Fannin and Jr. running the football, and he's a tight end. And then one of the more impressive runs that you're going to see in all of college football today is Raheem Smith with the jet sweep and what yeah. he was able to do. So right. they've been extremely tough right. in how they've run the football today throughout the first half and second half for Bowling Green. Martin, are you ready for this in the second half? This is going to be the 29th play snap for Bowling Green in Toledo territory. In the second half, 29 of them. Stewart's going to get stopped short for a loss there. But again, no more timeouts. So they have run 20 nine plays Bowling Green yeah. in Toledo territory not the football game in the second, second half <laughs> Toledo has run four in Bowling Green territory is that what we call ball control uh, yes sir and can control. I put about 10 exclamation points behind <laughs> your ball control <laughs> no doubt about and, it and and how about knowing how to close a football game out yes because I was concerned about whether I could be able to pull that off because they started to falter in the beginning of the second half that'd be both agree but they got together just inside the two minute timeout all right we'll be right back to glass bowl stadium liberty mutual customized my car insurance so I saved hundreds Ow. it's that extra ice for light we love Get a free upgrade to home. Uh -huh. Back inside Glass Bowl Stadium, three finals around the Mid-American Conference today. Big win for Tim Albin at Ohio at home over Buffalo. Uh, diddle that for Chuck Martin in, uh, in Miami over Central Michigan. How about Ball State beat Ooh. Northern Illinois at home in Muncie? The other two, in addition to this one, still going in the fourth quarter. Here, Bowling Green on top of Toledo, 41-26. Terry on Stewart on that third down carry inside the 20. Clock's going to run. Toledo's out of timeouts. You know that uh, here, right? Mm -hmm. You know, head coach Scott Leffler is going to say, let's run the football one more time. And uh, we'll take our chances, even if it is with a change of possession. Exactly. And you will literally wait to one second remaining on the clock before you hike that football. Uh, again, not to turn, but how impressive do you believe you feel that this is for Bowling Green if this stands up, which looks like it's going to come in here to Glass Bowl Stadium, major rivalry. And with this type of performance, basically lead the entire way. Bowling Green. That's a third and final timeout. It's out. like they got off the bus, Michael, ready to play. When you think about how the game started, three and out scenario for the defense. The offense gets the ball back, and what do they do? They score in a manner and fashion which they show that, hey, we are coming here to play this rivalry game. And there were lows in the third quarter where I was saying to myself, do they have enough to close this game out? But to their credit, they got that third down key stop, picked up a couple of interceptions on the way, and next thing you know, they find themselves convincingly winning this football game. Well said, buddy. And uh, those in orange and brown feel real good. You just saw Jason Candle a moment ago, and again, you know, Jason Candle, no one uh, knows uh, how important this rivalry game is to win, and he's fared very, very well against Bowling Green. But today, the Falcons came into the Rockets' home, and uh, they put one on them. Yes, they did. They put one on them. Yes. Definitely the more physical team when it comes to running the football. Just expressing themselves, Bowling Green. It's tough to come in here with a football game. It's oh, really is. sensational. But yeah. they... All right, this is fourth and five now. Stewart. Turn it over on downs. The football will go back to the Toledo Rockets. So they'll get their hands on it one more time. But I mean, down by two touchdowns plus, 
They got a quick hit. Has about as fast as you could say, quick hit. Quick hit, onside kick, two point conversions, all those things are in the mix. Eric Campbell, the uh, longtime assistant coach with uh, Scott Leffler, they played together as uh, as Michigan Wolverines during their playing careers. One last opportunity for Tucker Gleason and this Toledo Rocket offense, and again, it's been a very up and down day for them. That quick throw will uh, get hauled in. Anthony Torres made the grab. Again, no timeouts, Toledo. They cannot stop the clock. Gleason. Gonna load it up. Oh, he had him. He did. He threw it out of bounds. The throw was 10 yards out of bounds. Gleason did take a shot as he delivered the football. He had one Newton wide open. If he throws an after pass, we're having a different conversation right now. Oh, he missed a great opportunity right there. All right, third down and two now. Just 42 ticks left. And that is all that uh, holds the Bowling Green Falcons from a celebration on their sidelines. First down, is that, uh, that, uh, that throw, that quick short throw is uh, hauled in by Jacquez Stewart. Chains will move, clock rolls inside 30 seconds. Gleason fired middle. Is that catch made? Is that hauled in? It was as the, uh, the grab was made for Toledo. Junior Vandeross made the catch. We're down to 21 seconds left. Again, the underneath throw. That is caught. Making that catch again. Eric Holly the third. Gonna bring up second down. We may not have another snap. Let's see. And the Bowling Green throng is really rubbing it up. Final snap. Clock hits triple zeros. Gleason's throw got kicked <laughs> off. It doesn't matter. They're gonna call it incomplete. You can book this one to Scott Leffler and his Bowling Green Falcons. A most impressive 41. 26 rivalry game road win over Jason Handel and Toledo. Yes, and give the Bowling Green Falcons major credit because what they did today and how they came into this hostile environment and took care of business and made sure that they got the job done by playing a complete football game, not two quarters or three quarters, but a complete football game. You have to be impressed by that. Tremendously impressive. Leffler this week in our conversations with him. Gerard Cherry, as you and I do with head coaches in preparation for each and every game. Um, you could sense a great deal of confidence coming in here. They felt they had a tremendous week of practice and preparation and felt very enthused and confident about coming in here against their big time rival and winning. Yeah, and it showed up on the football field today. As I said, Michael, when they got off the bus, they had the intentions that they were going to take care of business from the start of the game to the end of the game. That's exactly what they did. And this was a very impressive win by the Bowling Green Falcons. And yes, they now have that I-75 trophy and well deserved because they fought out represented and dominated this football game from start to finish for the last three years the road team has won the football game yes Bowling Green, something. yeah Bowling Green won here in 22 Toledo returned to favor last year at Doit Perry now the second consecutive win and third road team win overall in this heated rivalry this one goes to the road team the Bowling Green Falcons right you consider how dominant Toledo has been in this series for winning 12 out of the last 14 You'll certainly, if you're the Bowling Green faithful, take this victory and relish in it because it has not happened a lot in the past 10 years. I can hear the party starting. Yes, uh, it's starting. This short, <laughs> this <laughs> short <laughs> haul back down south <laughs> in I-75. The party is going to start. That all the, at all those uh, wonderful spots on the campus of Bowling Green State University. I won't mention the names of them now, but. 
There's many of them. How yes, about that? They are. Yeah. Yeah. Bowling Green. They come in here and win. Beat Toledo 41 26. All right, Gerard Cherry, what does this do to how the look standing wise in the Mid American Conference? As you see now, oh, how about this? Western Michigan still at 4 0, but Miami, Ohio, and Bowling Green just a game behind at 3 1. Right, the parody runs amok in the MAC, and if you're Western Michigan, you're loving where you're sitting right now. And for everybody else, Michael, I still feel even if you're at 2 and 2, you have a chance so? in this conference because, again, you yeah. never know what you're going to get oh, week in and week out. But you better win them all now. Yes, sir. You're going to need some things to go your way. Yes, you are. Yes, but you those are. three that we mentioned, Ohio, Miami, and Bowling Green, sit the three and one. And again, the job that's being done in Kalamazoo, Michigan, I, don't, I guarantee you nobody that follows the Mac. After four Mac games, Western Michigan's going to be four and zero. Oh. Yeah, Lance Taylor and company are certainly getting the job done. And again, the Bowling Green, great victory for Toledo. You obviously going to have to figure out some things on the offensive side of the ball to play a more complimentary brand of football and get that rushing attack and all that passing game going again. But more importantly, you live and die by your quarterback play. And today, it just was not enough on the part of Tucker Gleason to get the job done. Yeah, absolutely, partner. And again, yes, you mentioned Lance Taylor, the head coach of the Western Michigan Broncos. They're sitting in first place Great. halfway through the back standings. They've been terrific. Partner, you were phenomenal today as always. Love us being together. And that's going to do it as a lot of the hugs come for head coach Scott Leffler, the Bowling Green Falcons. They beat Toledo 41 26 from a partner, Gerard Cherry, our producer, Stas Hall, director, Anthony Giassi, and all of our tremendous Mac crew. I'm Michael Regai. Know you're joining everybody. Bowling Green beats Toledo. Enjoy your weekend. So long. From summer loves.